Pool 100. And uh, yeah, I brought. I think I brought y'all up, so y'all could talk. I guess. I don't yeah, I I'll pop it off. Um, I appreciate you for uh, doing this, but I mean, right now I got a couple of um. I'm just trying to create more streams of income, and, and I just like I've I kind of been into Robin Hood and the stock and everything, but that's kind of just I don't know. It's a bit difficult for me to get into, so I was just curious of other streams that you could, um, uh, you know. Just what am I trying to say? You know, give me ideas of, I guess. Right. So let's just let, I'm gonna break you down as a person. Um, if you got a pen and paper, I'm gonna break you down as a person. Um, so let's just start off with where you live at. Okay, for sure. I live in Illinois. Illinois, Chicago. So near near St. Louis, like right right off St. Louis. Like All right. in. All right, cool. So give me your age. I just turned 24. Just turned 24. All right, cool. So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you till 78. All right. 78. So we're gonna write these things down. So you're 24. The average person in America dies at 78. Okay. So that's 54 years you got until you die. We just going to estimate you dying at 78 years old. You got 54 years. Let's break down your 54 years. Let's create a business plan for your 54 years. All right. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Everything that I'm doing, I'm freestyling. So I can't go backwards, really, because I'm not going to I'm not memorizing. It. It's up to you to write it down or to memorize it or maybe the crowd can help you. Or maybe they could tweet you or DM you and help you and blah 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 blah. But all of this is off the top of the head. So just you gotta you gotta walk with me and write this shit down. I got you. All right, you got fifty four years to live. Now, for you to reap the benefits of you being successful and making all this money, and you want to retire and you want to live like your last twenty twenty five years, like financially free, like literally financially free, which means you wake up every day, you don't have to do anything. And you're, you you have enough finances to live until you die. Okay? First thing you need to do, I tell this to people all the time. You see people that, that do it on, like, Instagram and Twitter. They be like, yo, get life insurance. That's, like, that's probably the number one thing you want to do. Since you're at a young age, you want to get life insurance. You want to get a million-dollar policy. Regardless if you have the money or not, you need to figure out how to get the money. And we'll talk about that later. But the reason why I'm gonna tell you why the reason why you want to get life insurance, the reason why you want to get life insurance at a young age is because you pay a cheaper price per month as you keep renewing your insurance renewal policy. So as long as you start it at this age, it's still gonna continue to be cheap no matter how older you get, as long as you keep renewing the policy over and over. Most policies, I think you can get like a 20 year, like a 15 year. I, I don't know, it ranges from different companies, but get like a 20 year and keep doing it 20 year 20 year that's 60 years you you 24 so you you really gonna be good on your second policy um once you get the million dollar life insurance policy once you die whoever is your caretaker whoever your kids are or however you divvy it up when you die with your will a million dollars will be distributed i don't know what type of person you are but if you are about legacy or if you're not even about legacy let's just say if you don't like kids or whatever you can give that money away to whatever uh, nonprofit. If you started a nonprofit, or you can give that money to help uh, hungry children in Africa, whatever you want to do. But it's a million dollars. You feel me? So you definitely want to have that. You want to have money while you're alive, and you also want to have money when you're deceased. Okay? So that's like one of the top things. So make sure you write down that life insurance. You want to get life insurance at a young age ASAP. I got you. Um, I'm going to tell you like an estimate price that you're going to pay throughout your whole entire year. So let's divvy it up throughout your whole entire life from 24 all the way until you die, like 78 years old, you're going to pay anywhere from 70,000 to $75,000. That's how much you're going to pay for your life insurance policy over the course of your whole term living. You're going to get, or you're not really going to get it, but your kids or whatever, they're going to get a whole million dollars off the rip. So you're 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 getting a 90% return on investment, more than 90% return on investment after you pass away. All right. Now, that's the first thing. Second thing, 
You got 54 years. So you need to break down the 54 years into a business plan. Your business plan, you could do the whole entire 54 years or you could break it do, down. Do the whole entire do 54 like years or you could break it down. So what I mean by that like is 30. you take 30 years from 54. So what I mean by that is you take 30 years from 54. So we'll minus that. And you, you're going to have to bring numbers back once I start going into your plan. So now we have, you got 54. 54 minus 30 is 24 years. So you have 24 years to live if you retire. 30 years from now okay so that'll put you at like what 54 so you'll get to retire at 54 which is not not a bad age it's, it's a good age um so what are we gonna do with these 30 years these next 30 years we got to come up with a business plan now we'll talk about the money after but the first thing you have to do is lay down a foundation if you don't have a foundation there's no point in making money if you made 10 million dollars and you don't have a plan on what to do with it you're just gonna blow it and it's just gonna be gone if you don't know how to uh, financially handle your business or handle your money, is is no point in having the money. So we what we want to do is break down the business plan. So your thirty years. So let's give me give me an estimate, regardless if you got a job or not. Just give me an estimate on how much you think you make every single year. Forty five thousand. Okay, so we remember I'm doing this off the top of my head, so I'm not gonna be able to rem remember numbers. So forty five thousand. We're going to divide that by 12. So you're making around thirty-seven fifty a month. All right? thirty-seven fifty a month. Now, give me a rough estimate on your bills, like how much you give out. That includes food. That includes car note, insurance, uh, rent. Let's say 900 900 So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, just put that at thirty-seven fifty minus minus 1000 we're going to put it. All right, that leaves you with twenty seven fifty. That leaves you with twenty seven fifty. Now, let's just on estimate. Let's just say if you twenty seven fifty times twelve, that's gonna give you thirty three thousand. Now I don't know your situation, blah blah blah. You might be at home with the moms, blah blah blah. You might not be paying the rent, but I think you might be paying a little bit more once you get a little bit older. But let's just say for right now. You you keeping thirty three thousand dollars. I don't know how that's possible, but you keeping thirty three thousand dollars. We gonna times that by thirty. Let's just say you did that thirty years straight. That's a million dollars. It's a million dollars you made in a, in thirty years. I think that takes a little too long because you have to save up all that money. That means you didn't go you didn't go to no clubs. You didn't you know go on vacation. You didn't get to do shit. You literally just stacked up. That whole entire time, it made a million dollars in 30 years. Your life insurance policy is going to give you another million, quote unquote. So you one you get when you're dead, one you, you'll have to retire with, with a million. Now, what can you possibly do? What do you think you could possibly do to turn that million dollars into maybe, let's say, 10 or 20 million? Do you have any ideas? Do you know anything about the stock market, S&P 500, cryptocurrency, uh, real estate, reinvesting your money, RRIs? Um, do you know anything about that? Yeah, I know about it, like real estate and everything. I know about it. I don't do it, but I know about it. Okay, so what, I mean, which, what, what are things that you like to do personally as a person? Because I don't like putting people in situations that they, they're not comfortable with or they don't, or they don't like. Right, right. So one of me, me and my friends, we have been talking about some real estate. But I mean, outside of like just me and my salary position, I personal train, officiate basketball games. So those are some of my other dreams and coach my football. All right. So are we looking at are you looking at personal training or are you I'm looking I'm looking more towards like investing, not no something. Oh, OK, OK, OK. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Investing, yeah, it, it would be real estate then if I'm investing in something. Or a clothing oh. line, possibly. My friend got a clothing line. Let's look more into uh, asset classes. Um, OK. More into asset. You well, Two things you want to do when you're investing. You want to have a store of value and then you want to return on investment. You could do one of the two. Don't ever do anything outside of that. Ever in life. You want an ROI or you want a store of value. If it don't give you those two things, if it's not your kids, don't do it. 
at the end of the day. So everything you want to look at the same way I'm breaking down a business plan for you right now, you need to break down the business. Even if it's a clothing line, if it's a fucking car shop or real estate, you need to know the RRI before you even get into the business. If it don't, if, you, if they can't explain it, if you can't figure it out, don't do it. A store of value is something where you take your investments or you take your saved up money, you put it in something and it just sits there. It doesn't lose any value. It stores its value. It stays there. If anything, it might gain 1%, 2%, something, you know, whatever. You're not really concerned because you really just want the money stored somewhere. And that's why people use banks, but banks are terrible to store your money because they're using your money. Same thing that you should be doing with your money. They're doing what you're supposed to do with your money. So you want to look at things like real estate. You want to look at things like crypto. And you want to look at things like stock. Now, I heard you talking about stocks earlier and you were talking like you were like kind of like day trading or part of like some group where you get like calls and y'all get in and you get 10 percent or maybe some fucking option calls or some shit like that. Like that what you was into. Yeah, like just just day trading calls, puts, selling and all that stuff. Yeah. So if you don't have let's let's say if you don't have a hundred K or you don't have 50 K. It wouldn't be smart to day trade. If you haven't looked at the success rate, most people in day trading fail, regardless if you make gains. Let's say if I made a lot of gains this whole entire month, next two months could be terrible. And all those gains that you got from the first month go down a drain. The cycle of stocks, cryptocurrency or any business is to let you win, then take everything from you and then take more after. Unless you know exactly what's going on, which is inside trading, which that's what some people do. That's how some people are able to make calls and get the right information and knowledge on when things are coming out. But if you don't have that information and you're getting it from a second, third, fourth party, you're literally like chasing the ball and you don't never want to chase the ball. You want to be the ball or you want to be the one pushing the ball. So most things you want to focus on are long term investments, long term investments. That's going to give you a nice ROI every single year, return on investment every single year. Those are the things you want to look at. That short-term game looks really good, but long-term is what you want to focus on. No matter if it's stocks, no matter if it's crypto, no matter if it's real estate, you want to look at long-term. Something I'll give you, something that I just recently did, I was looking at real estate in the United States market, and then I stopped looking at real estate in the United States market. Then I started tapping into other countries, third-world countries. I've always been a person to push forward in different countries. Like, so I was first prepped in India. That was the first place where I was getting in tune with the culture, um, checking out their following. That's why I have so many followers on Instagram, because I'm tap i tapped in with the Indian culture. So that's what I focus on. So third world countries eventually have to be first world countries at the end of the day. They can't be forever third world. I mean, third world countries, just like us, like black people, right? At one point, quote unquote, we were kings, then we became slaves and now you know we're starting to get our mojo back in the united states things go in a circle so you have to understand that just because something is down right now doesn't mean it's going to be down in the future you invest in the things that are down right now so you could prosper in the future that's what everybody did the same way that people came over here to the united states and conquered the united states it's the same exact way so you have to look at that from a business perspective on yourself that's why people do like you hear people talking about gentrification. Gentrification is when somebody comes in a bad neighborhood, cleans that shit up, push the people out, fix up the neighborhood around it, and then bring in new people. It's the same exact thing. Some people that are indigenous and some people that are very nice people, they might call that capitalism. You can look, like, look at it how you want to look at it, but everybody needs somebody and somebody needs somebody so we can all grow. Um... Those are the things that you should be focusing on long term. You need to create your business structure and your business plan over 30 years. That's what you want to do. So we said if you saved all your money that you're currently making right now and you only lived off of your rent and whatever expenses that you had, which you said was like 900, you literally make a million dollars in a, in, a, in, a, in a 30 year period, which is too long. But most people don't make a million in a lifetime. So that's, you know, that's fair. Now, what you that's only off of one income. Most people create multiple revenue streams. So you're supposed to have seven. 
And why I say seven? Because every bill that you have is supposed to be a revenue stream to conquer that bill. And then you're supposed to take the profits from that and invest it and save it or spend it on a family vacation or your kids or X, Y, and Z. So let's just say if, um, let's say you have rent, car note, uh, insurance, electricity bill, food, um, and, and two other bills. So you can either have one big revenue stream that take care of, that takes care of all of that. Or you can create many micro revenue streams that take care of at least two two of those problems at once. So if you if you're refereeing games, okay, cool. Refereeing games that take care of two of my bills. Um, my job that I have, my nine to five, all right, that takes care of two bills that I have. Um, and then I'm doing uh, some internet stuff on the side. Maybe I make websites. Maybe I'm a graphic designer. That takes care of two. So that's two, four, six. Six of my bills already take taken care of by three revenue streams that I have on the side, regardless if it's a thousand dollars a month or 500 or maybe 2000, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. A lot of people be like, yo, I need to get a job. Like I need a nine to five so I can do X, Y, and Z. I need three jobs. It's like, you don't have to have three jobs. You can just have a side gig just to take care of two bills out of those seven that you have. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you for sure. So you got to focus on that. Like that. That's like the main focus. A lot of human beings in life don't have a plan. They just go by, oh, nine to five. All right, I made this much. My bills are this much. I got this much saved. Let me save it. And they try to keep up with that shit without an alarm, without uh, scheduling, without writing it down, without, you know, goals set in mind, without a yearly five-year plan, three-year plan, without um, doing any studying or researching outside of their sleep, eat work fun schedule they don't put anything to the side to do research to look at stocks they don't do anything outside of research to look at investments they don't do anything outside of trying to learn more and it's like where do you go to learn some people say youtube university some people say read books some people say you know do this but me personally google is your best friend when people ask me questions they can literally ask google the same questions now, those answers might come from different people, and it might sound better from my mouth, but all the answers you need is on the World Wide Web. So you can always get the answers that you need just typing in questions, just asking Google, blah, 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 and, you know, looking up those articles and reading and buying books and, and doing X, Y, Z. Now, how I started getting different revenue streams is I, I got in the game, social media game, early, So, but you can still do it. So... You don't have to do social media, but this is just the things that I was doing. I was I was getting paid from music. I was getting paid from YouTube. I was getting paid from being a social media influencer. So those are three different things that I was doing that was wrapped up all in the same categories. YouTube paid me because I posted videos. I was an uh, influencer. I had influence. I had followers, so I made music so people would listen to it. Since they follow me, they will at least listen to it. And then I will put my music on YouTube and put it behind some of my videos. So I correlate everything together. And because I had a following, uh, companies wanted to pay me. But that's all in the same thing. I didn't have to go outside my room. I didn't have to go cut grass and then go make lemonade and then, you know, be an Uber driver. You get what I'm saying? Like, I kind of kept kind of kept everything together. Um, and there's multiple revenue streams that you can have that kind of do the same thing. So let's just say, for example, if you're a graphic designer, all right, cool. You can be the best graphic designer. You can be a half-assed graphic designer. But you can learn how to do websites as well. So when a person be like, oh, can you do my website? He's like, yeah, it's like 700 to 1,000. It might take you two weeks to do that, maybe a week. And then if you do the graphics, you learn how to do graphics. And you don't even really have to learn how to do graphics. You have to be really good at putting things together. Because there's so many apps now out for people to you know, mix and match and they taking away the background for you and adding text and shit like shit way easier these days. Like if you create a business structure to where you offer different services under the same umbrella, then I think you do fairly well. Um, you have to know the breakdown on business though. So the breakdown on businesses is like, yo, all right, I need 200 people this month or every month. I need 200 people. They, the, the minimum I can charge them is ten dollars 200 people ten dollars that's two thousand dollars a month i need to make 
200 graphics, you need to divide 200 customers divided by 30 in a month. 200 divided by 30. That means you need six new customers a day. Sounds hard? No, it's eight hours in a day. All right, you might not have eight hours, but you do. If you have a job, boom, one revenue, uh, one revenue stream. I mean, one job takes care of two incomes. This second job that you got right now, quote unquote, that you're making graphics and, and websites and all this extra shit, that takes care of two. We got two more that we need to take care of. You got 24 hours in a day. The breakdown is 8, 16, 24. That other, that other eight, you got to sleep. So maybe this agency or maybe this where you make graphic designs and, and websites, maybe we can cut that down to four, four hours. And then you got to add something else in the other four hours. And you got to get your eight hours or your six hours of sleep. Me personally, I get six hours a day. But, you know, you starting off, you want to get your eight. Um, are you following me with the breakdowns and the hours and all that shit? Yeah, yeah I got you for sure. I'm writing it down. All right. Um, so... Now, here's the part that most people don't want to do. And we talked about it earlier. It's the studying and the research and the data. Those are the things that you want to do. The three things. So it's like, all right, how can I get another revenue stream? You learn something that most people don't want to learn or most people don't want to do. You do the things that people don't want to do. Some people are lazy or some people don't have the time. The people that are lazy... You want to do things for the lazy people. The people that don't have time, you want to do things for the people that don't have time. Why? Because those are the people that are going to pay you the fastest. But make sure you do your job. But if you can fill those voids those for those, for those people, if you can provide services, if you can fill those gaps, if you can get your four to six customers a day, quote unquote, the marketing and advertisement, how do I market and advertisement? Two things. You can even pay for your clients. If your, if your client is going to pay you $100, you can pay Google or YouTube, what, y'all, $5 per thousand impressions or per thousand people that are going to target them directly. So if you get $100 per person, let's just break it down. $100 per person, all right, take $10 out of that, and we're going to put that towards advertisement. If the, if, the, if the marketing doesn't go well, if I don't get one client or two off of this $10, then my marketing and my advertising or my photo or my video is not good enough. So what you want to do is have a good photo. You want to have a good video that explains it. You can go on Fiverr. You can get a voiceover done, write a good pitch. Um, you can get a 2D or 3D explainer video and explain your services. Or you could do it yourself right in front of the camera. Hey, I'm Marquise Trill, and I do graphic design. These are some of the websites that I design. You go ahead and do like two or three websites for free for some people or graphic design. It, I'm not. Just, I'm just using websites and graphic design, but I'm saying you could do this for literally anything, bro. Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube—they've already done the hard work for you. They've already accumulated all of our information from our numbers, our address, our IP addresses, our name, our date of birth, and what we're interested in. They have all that information. There's two things you could do. You can use their platform for free. And do the hard work, which means go out and get those customers, hit people up on their page, DM them, or you can pay those platforms to advertise your stuff for you for the things and services that you offer and then get clients off of that. Follow me? I got you. I got you. Cool. So I know I, we went over a lot of stuff really quick, but that's the way the shit works. And it's fairly easy. It's not really hard. A lot of people are like, yo, I'm doing bad in business. I'm like, how? Like, you live around people. Be a people person. Talk to the people in your community. If you live in a city of 2 million, are you telling me you can't get, what we do, 6 times 30? You telling me you can't get business from 200 people out of 2 million? You telling me that 200 businesses or 200 people, somebody not throwing a party, somebody don't have a business, you can't create like no um, budget for them or you can't do something for free and they advertise you on their page. Like you don't know how to hustle. Like it's, it's, it's it, you know, it's really easy, man. Um, a lot of people do social media management too. So for, again, that was $2,000 for the website and the graphic designs for four hours. Let's say if you want to do social media management, doing small tasks, that means liking, 
commenting, answering DMs, and posting for that person. There's, I'm, I'm not going to get too much into it, but there's a company called Manage Flitter, and there's a company called Hootsuite, and there's also another company called Fire... Fire something. I can't fucking remember right now. Fire something. You can literally take people's pictures and videos, upload them automatically for the whole entire month with the caption and everything, and it'll post on those people's social media platforms. So I have a rule. It's called a 360 method. And the 360 method is you do 360 interactions every day. Your interaction is a like, it's a comment, it's a DM. Or you can literally talk to people on any social media platform. That's 360 interactions on 360 different people's pla- uh, um, profiles. So I don't know if you, I don't know where you know me from or whatever, but if you ever noticed on Instagram a while back, I used to comment on every single picture that anybody ever posted at one point in time. And I did that by hand. And then after a while, my thumb started hurting and then I created a bot. Um, using Google extensions to comment on pages automatically. Now, Instagram, you know, caught on to that and they shut it down. But you, you, you can always manipulate platforms when you first get on before they catch on. And then they kind of like create rules around the people that are utilizing a platform better than others. That's what I like to say. Um, so 360 times 30, that's 10,000 people that you engage with on a monthly basis for, uh, for a celebrity, for a model, for a rapper or whatever, all right? So they're interacting with 10,000 people a day. Those people can come back and follow. Those people can come back and comment. As long as Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever it is, is seeing engagement, they're going to continue to keep sharing your posts to other people. Now, you could do this yourself, but most people don't have the time. So let's just say if you did the 360 method every month for this person and you got them as a client, we times that by 12. They literally interacted with 129,000 people a year. That's a lot of people to a small business. There's a lot of small businesses. There's a lot of celebrities that can't manage their shit. There's a lot of people that are doing a lot of things that, that they can't manage their shit. So the breakdown that I just gave you can be your pitch to being a social media manager for somebody else, literally. The pitch that I literally just shared with you, you tell them how many engagements you're going to do every single day, how many engagements is going to end up in a month, and how many engagements is going to end up in a year. Then you give them a cost. I'm randomly making up this cost right now, literally. I, we just making up a cost off the top of our head, off the 360 engagement rule alone, okay? Um, let's just say we want to charge, what you want to charge? What you, what you want to charge, 500 you want to charge a thousand? What you want to charge? Let's do a thousand. Let's do a thousand. All right, cool. Let's do a thousand. A thousand dollars a month for the 360 method. Okay. Now, you got to find five people at least. You got to find at least five people. All right. You you might get you. They might lowball you to five hundred. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, you know, people that are making money are kind of cheap. I'm one of those people. You might lowball you to 500, plus they have to trust you. So it's got to be somebody you know, or you have to be managing other people's pages that they know that you're managing. But let's just keep it at 1000 at the price that you want it. Find find five influencers, models, celebrities, small businesses, okay, in your neighborhood or off the internet. And just let them know, hey, I'll do X, Y, and Z for you. You create a, a press kit, media press kit. Um, you have to use two or three pages. You have to remember, we have to go and find companies and businesses and models or artists that we that we that we know personally or just dm people like yo i'll do this for free for the for the next three to six months i'll do this for free for you you screenshot they page you screenshot their likes you screenshot everything their engagement you screenshot all that shit you work for them for free you work for them for free to three to six months you use them as 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 test components to market to your customers in the future so you could say, hey, this person, is, regardless if they grown on their own or whatever, maybe they got hot music or maybe the model was paying for promo and she got big, but you still work for them and you still help towards that. So you can use that to market and advertise to your next future customer. So you could say, hey, this person, I started with them at 2000, three months later, boom, they had six or they had 10 or they had nine, whatever, whatever growth you had. It's still good growth because the customer is looking at it like shit. 
I've been at 500 for the last nine months and my business is failing. Blah, 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 blah. So you use that. They're going to they're gonna try it out. They always try it out. Your job is to do a great job and go over and beyond those first couple months. Don't slack, though. But you got to go over and beyond those first couple months and then level yourself out throughout it to where they're happy and getting the engagement that they need. You find five people that could be five businesses, models, artists, rappers, whatever. They pay you $1,000. Now you're making $5,000 a month just on social media management. Remember, we went from making websites and graphics. Now we jumped over into a whole nother lane. But with the same pattern and with the same marketing strategy that we've been using for everything else, including our personal life on investments, savements, and X, Y, and Z. So now, now I'm going to tell you this. 360 interactions is going to take you anywhere from an hour to an hour and 30 minutes. Okay? It's going to take you an hour to an hour and 30 minutes every single day to do that for somebody's page. So if you got five clients, you need to do that every day. That's going to take you at least, I'm going to be honest with you, if you do it straight, it's going to take you at least six hours, six to seven hours. If you don't do it straight, it could take you anywhere from eight to ten hours. If you don't do it straight, what I mean by that is the breaks that you take in the middle are counted as work hours because you're still working. You're going to end up working later on in the day. Um, And that's the minimum as well. So you always want to keep that in mind. So if you have five clients, you got to do 360 times five. You got to do 1,800 interactions a day, but you're making 5,000 a month on top of the the 3,300 that you're already making. And if you're doing something else, the other revenue streams and the 2000 we was talking about. So now you're looking at a five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you're looking at $10,000 a month compared to the, I guess, however much you was making before we uh, subtracted the, the money that you was making from your first job. So now we went from a, I think it was like, I don't know how much, how much was it? 2000 or something? It was like 3000 something. 3000. So we went from, we went from 3000 to 10,000. Super quick, just by adding two new revenue streams. Um, it's your your page doesn't have to have a lot of followers. If you feel like people going only gonna hire you because you have followers, you could pay like you could pay like two forty, two fifty, or you could probably pay like three hundred dollars. Um, put your page in one of those like um, giveaway pages. I mean, giveaway contests that the people be doing in different countries. You might get ten thousand followers, probably. 6,000 going to unfollow you. You're going to be stuck with like 4,000. That puts you at a nice little follower rate for your page for it to look professional. You post the little graphic pictures and you post your results and your reviews and you know you should be straight from there. You know how people don't want to do business with you if you got 50 followers and you know you following 100 people. You know how they go. So that, that'll help you as far as that's concerned. Or you could do the 360 method yourself on your own page to build your page up. Um, yeah, man, you following me? Uh, for sure. I appreciate that. That was some helpful information. For sure. Um, s- something that I'm doing, I- I'm full-time in crypto, bro. Like, full-time in crypto. All cryptos are not good cryptos. So, don't don't ask me about no crazy cryptocurrencies. Don't, don't think that I invest in, you know, anything that has anything to do with Uniswap, PancakeSwap. I don't invest in none of those small meme tokens. I'm not into that. I'm only invested in real quote unquote, we're going to call them assets or securities, whatever the SEC wants to call them shits. I'm invested in real ones that are going to have long-term capabilities, long-term investments that are not going anywhere, that have solitude, and that's going to be here for a long time. So uh, my investments just from the beginning, from 2017, I don't know how many people have been following me for a long time, but I've been here since 2017. And my investments have you know, changed my life, literally changed my whole entire life, changed the way I think, changed where I am, changed who I am, changed, you know, how I think about things It's literally changed my whole entire life. And it's still only the beginning. Um, Your money in the bank is no good. They're using your money to go and buy new properties, to give out loans, to fucking do whatever the fuck they want to do. They just using your money when you keep your money in the bank. You should be doing what they're doing with your own money. If you got a question like how, go and use Google. Stop asking questions like how, unless you're asking a person like me or someone that you look up to or, you know, 
someone that's giving out free information. There's two ways to take information. Video, voice, in person, books, YouTube, and there's another way, but I can't remember right now. If you're not... Uh, oh, go ahead. David. Hey, Marquise. I, uh, I've been thinking about what I would ask you. I appreciate you bringing me up. I was going to answer a question about spaces. Uh, on the subject of using Google, uh, I just went back to college for the first time in seven years. Uh, and Congrats. Was, was a, well, actually, I, I was going to say uh, I'm no longer in college. To, I went for one, <laughs> one semester. Uh, and my experience that like the experience that was very alarming to me was how poorly uh kids are still using uh search engines um and i i guess uh what i wanted to to ask you as it like a true authority in all this stuff i've been, I've been following you since like the myspace days um oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But like yeah. you are actually an authority on um marketing in 2021 in a way that a lot of people right now, especially in Clubhouse, uh are purporting themselves to be, are describing themselves. Um and what's I guess I would I would actually just ask you to it to address that. Um because I see it as a as a huge disparity. I've actually I'm writing an essay that you would definitely hate. Um, I, that's arguing that the average person on social media, unless you de- like explicitly determine that you're going to be a marketing person, that you avoid any sort of strategy. Um, but you're the perfect example of of someone who is like actually an authority i guess i would just ask you to address that like which is yeah not- so there's yeah. there's so there's multiple ways you can be someone or something there's not one way to go about anything now me as far as strategy is concerned mine's is more focused on like having a schedule like so not not like going by a b c d e f g it's like okay a Wake up at 9.30 so I could do my TikToks before I go eat breakfast, before I go to the gym, before I do this. Not telling you exactly what TikToks to do, what to wear, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like As long as you're consistent, consistency is key. If you're not consistent, if people don't know you buy something, then you're not going to be known for anything. So Will Smith, actor, he became great into actor. Then he started doing music. Then he started doing movies. 50 cent anybody you look at they did something first then they branched off doing other things same same thing i'm thinking about i branched off into different things just by accident because of who i was and the people that i knew and i got connections but as far as the google is concerned yes google (laughs) i (laughs) i tell people all the time it's like when they're right next to me it's like why don't you use your smartphone? It's a thousand. You paid a thousand dollars for that for your iPhone in your hand, and you're like, "How do you do this?" Or you you ask me a question that your phone can literally do. You're asking me that, and I'm not saying it in a cocky way. I'm just saying the thing in your hand can literally. You probably could have got the answer faster from that phone than you would have asked me, which would have saved you time, and time is money. And time is power, and power equals currency, current currency. You guys, you guys know all that, mama jamma or whatever. So people are people don't know how to use Google. People don't know how to use the internet. And I used to be one of those people. One thing clinked in my head one day is I talked to myself in my head. Y'all don't talk about it. Don't call me crazy. But I think it's a must that you must talk to yourself in your head. And it's not actually words coming out of your mouth you're literally talking to yourself in your brain i don't know if other people do that you can actually hear a voice and everything but i'm not really saying anything and uh, i was on the internet and i did i I literally went to four websites every single day (laughs) i went to four websites i don't know what era of time this was in but let's just say i went to I went to Google because that was my uh, default setting browser. 
then from from Google, I would type in whatever was MySpace or Facebook. I would log into Facebook, and then I would get on my next social media platform, and then I would get on my email. And I did that every day. And I was like, I one, th- one thing it just popped up in my head, I was like, why the fuck? Isn't this the worldwide? I literally said this to myself. Isn't this the worldwide web? What else is out there? Get out of your comfort zone. Just go on Google. Just look up shit. Just 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 type up shit. Click on links. Like all, all type of shit. Yeah, my grandma's computer got bugs and fucking all type of shit. And sometimes she kicked me off, and people have to come over and fix the computer. But you know, that's how I found like that's how I found the dark web. That's how I found black hat. That's how I found hackers from Ukraine and Russia. And that's how I found out that, you know, Instagram and Twitter, they're they're manipulating their own social media platforms. That's when I started finding out about panels and I started finding out about followers and fake followers and, you know, likes and growing your page, merges and fucking all type of shit. Like it's the, the, the real Internet. It literally, it's, it's, it's untouchable. The things you can get on the internet from a kidney to a hitman to buying an Instagram page, buying a Twitter page, uh, promo to Bitcoin and purchasing things like it's literally, you can do what you want. It's literally like the matrix, literally, I'm not even going to lie, but you do have to get dirty. And what I mean by that is, you know, you do have to get on these websites, use an IP address. All right. Protect your identity. You do have to get on these websites. You you might pay for something. It might be a scam. You might create a login or a password. And these people might be, you know, grabbing your information, but they still might be giving you access. But in exchange, they're getting your information or whatever. Um, you have to do deals with people that they want the money first. <laughs> and you gotta you don't know these people and you don't never seen their face never heard their voice but they offering you something that you want and you got to give them the money first and pray to god that you receive what you're asking for like you you just got to take those risks if you don't take those risks then you'll never reap the benefits or, or get into a status that you really want to get to it's the same way in the music industry or any real estate business or anything you have to do something for somebody for you to get something in in exchange. And that's what they call like the Illuminati or that's what they, you see people, oh, you are part of this group or a part of that group. It's like to grow, you have to, because there's people that are already in those spots. You either got to take that spot, you have to fill that spot, or you're going to continue to be under a certain level because there are gatekeepers. If you guys ever heard of a a gatekeeper, a gatekeeper is a person that's in a certain industry that holds that spot, holds that position, and the overseer of everything that happens in that industry if you're with us um you you build with us you connect with us we know about you or we're just not gonna let you just you know become successful out of nowhere you know what i'm saying it's like the government knocking and tapping at your door like hey like what are you doing over here building facebook like what is all this information you got like can you control that like come 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 holla at us like come to our course we want to ask you some questions sir Thank you. So, yeah, David, hope that um, answers your question a little bit. But I would like to uh, see that research paper, though, whenever you get finished with it. Actually, I was uh, on the on the topic of, of gatekeeping. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, did do research uh, a little bit. I, I was I really wanted to write the book about Facebook. I'm glad that someone else did because I, I burnt out for sure. Uh, <laughs> and write an academic paper is what I wanted to do. But the reason, a lot of the reason why people don't know how to use these things better, like Google, like using quotation marks, okay, to search an exact phrase on Google. Um, mm-hmm. One of the reasons why it's not people's fault, it's not because people are dumb, it's because there is no uh, business incentive for a tool like Google, which is not primarily a tool, right? It's like Google Alphabet, the company that that makes Google did not well, no longer makes Google primarily to be a search engine. It, uh, it's primarily to, to generate ad revenue. Uh, a search engine is the is the way to get you in. 
But what I was saying is there, there's no in business incentive for them to teach you how to use these tools. That's why Facebook um, like differentiates uh, from like a lot of other software in that it is not designed to uh, be as usable as possible. It's not designed to, to help uh, users accomplish specific tasks. It's actually designed to lead you around on a leash. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, the, the answer is like, I, I always wondered why people, why uh, you know, people weren't more comfortable using search engines, and I think I like you. Like, I think I'm just curious, and so I have poked around on the web. Uh, one thing, like your advice to to just go around on the web. One thing that I found: use a password manager. Any like a, anyone that is listening, for God's sakes, um, use a password manager, and and use unique passwords. Use long passwords. Um, <laughs> that's, I would, I would definitely like, uh, if I had one thing to advocate for, it's, 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 it's password manager, but yeah, thanks for engaging with me. This is like a weird, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Twitter spaces, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. It's definitely cool. I, I, I have to work it better or they have to work this better for my account at least. Cause I guess I follow so many people. So they have to send out. I guess four point six million. I guess. Oh, I'm sure you broke something. Uh, it's also notable yeah. that Twitter is the most negligent uh, software company. I actually the most negligent company uh, I have ever encountered. Um, and yeah, but yeah, like good news, they're actually really designing. They're focusing on the platform uh, for people like you who are are what I would describe as professional um social media users as opposed to regular users but that's what i originally wanted to say is like there are people for whom like using social media has nothing to do about growth and they just want to casually use it and that's the original uh group of people who use social back in you know the uh the aughts the original people on twitter were just screwing around um and i really i don't think that there's like a i'm not saying that it's good or bad i just think we need to start differentiating um between people who like want to do marketing stuff want to explicitly move in that direction and people who just want to bumble around um because i feel like the two are getting confused and it's way to steal a lot of time right now yeah it's definitely feeling like that um uh twitter is moving towards that space and you got to remember um, something that I learned, Twitter is still a private company. So that means they control everything. So it's still, you know, like Twitter, I mean, I don't want to, you know, get into like deep things, but Twitter still has XXX content, you know, on here. One Instagram boots people off, Snapchat boots people off Twitter. You can post whatever you want, as long as you're not, a, you know, that T word, you're, you're pretty much good on Twitter. So I like it for that, too. It gives you real freedom to speak, even though they did kick off Donald Trump. Um, is, 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 um, is, uh, what's his name? I haven't seen him so much. Uh, Farrakhan. Is Farrakhan on Twitter, guys? Anybody can put, like, the thumbs down emoji or a sad emoji and let me know that he's on or he's not on here. I don't know. But I know that he got kicked off as well off the, uh, most social media platforms and we're getting to a, a point like that anyway to where there's going to be a lot of control for the um social media spaces so hopefully it, it gets better over time but who knows man let me see if i can remove sin uh, i'm trying to if you guys want to come up and talk i'm adding hey. people What's going so, on, my case? What's popping? Yeah, and I just want to say thanks, you know, for opening up this space, for spreading your knowledge, because, you know, knowledge is power. And, you know, I just wanted to say thank you for that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm just trying to, because I've, I've seen and done so much recently, I'm just trying to, like, share as much as possible. I don't want nobody to be stuck or tied down to anything, because I literally came from South Central LA, you feel me? 
Like I came from 71st and Budlong, South Central LA, between you know Hoover's, A Track Gangsters, and Crips in a real bad neighborhood. I literally, that's where I come from. I lived in Compton. I lived in Inglewood. So I'm just trying to share everything. I'm trying to share it all. <laughs> That's another what? huge difference between you and uh, basically everyone else I've ever seen talk about crypto. Uh, like, you are the only person I would actually listen to about crypto um, or social media strategy, for that matter. What were you saying, Relevancy? Oh, right. I just had a question. I really wanted to know more about... Um just investing in different spaces. I know you were speaking a little bit about like investing in the United States, um, talking about capital gains tax and stuff like that. I was super interested in um, what you have to say. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to speak very uh, broad on this subject. Okay. Cause we are on Twitter spaces. I am on a social media platform. This is being recorded. So I try to, speak very broad about those topics. I don't want anybody, Uncle Sam, to think that I am promoting or marketing people avoiding um, paying taxes, quote unquote. Right. But I, I will share the information. So Puerto Rico is a place that you can live. You have to live there six months. Out of 100. You have to hurry up and do this before 2035. And if you live there, quote unquote, if you live there, you don't have to pay capital gains tax. Only in Puerto Rico, though. Puerto Rico is territory of the United States. So if you're running away from the United States, if you are a wanted person, if you have, if you owe child support or any, if you've done anything bad, don't even try to go there to avoid capital gains tax because you're still in territory of the United States. Now, anything as far as stocks is concerned or cryptocurrency, you're good money. You don't have to pay no capital gains tax as long as you live in Puerto Rico. You're good. Another thing you could do is invest in cryptocurrency. Right now, the number one cryptocurrency to invest in is Bitcoin. I'm not, I am not a Bitcoin maximalist, which means I am not an extremist about Bitcoin, but I, quote unquote, I, I love Bitcoin. <laughs> um, it's the strongest cryptocurrency in the market. It controls the whole entire market for now until regulation comes and people can really, you know, invest in companies with some type of confidence. But until then, Bitcoin is king. And with Bitcoin, which I learned, I literally learned this maybe like a month or two ago. And you could borrow against your Bitcoin. And what I mean by borrowing against your Bitcoin is that you can have up to $100,000 in Bitcoin. Remember I told you guys about investing and creating different revenue streams. So let's just say if you were scared that Bitcoin was going to go down or it's just not real or blah, 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 whatever the fuck people be saying stupid shit. Let's say if you just took your savings, instead of putting it in a bank account, you just invested in Bitcoin every single week, every time you got a paycheck or every month. You got as much Bitcoin as you wanted. Coinbase or any other third party platform, but you want to get on a platform that is trusted by the government. And Gemini is trusted by the government, Kraken, Kraken, and Coinbase. And I will use Coinbase for the most extremist, safest methods right now as of right now you could borrow if you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoin you could borrow up to a hundred thousand dollars collateral on your bitcoin so let's just say if you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoin you could borrow up to 40 percent of that when you borrow order up to 40 percent they give you cash so if you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoin you borrow 40% of that, that's $40,000. They're going to give you $40,000 in cash. You're also still going to own your Bitcoin. All you have to do is pay back that loan, that $40,000. You can do what you want with the $40,000 as long as you pay that loan back. Now, you could pay that loan back whenever you want to, as long as you're paying on the APR, which is the 8%. 
as long as you're paying that APR, which is 8% a year, you'll be good. So you have to divide that 8% times 12 months. And whatever you borrow, you have to pay that every single month. And that's just the APR. So I would advise you to pay it back as soon as possible. Now, there's a cheat code out there that most people don't know about. And that cheat code is to take that $40,000 and invest in Bitcoin again during the bull market. Majority of the times, I know you might not know much. I mean, I'm not going to say that about you. Maybe you do know about cryptocurrency. Let me not jump to um assumptions and um, conspicuousies and stuff. If you know when the next bull run is going to happen or, or when you know when Bitcoin is going to go up, you can take that same, you can take out your loan exactly when the um, bull market is happening, take that $40,000, invest in Bitcoin again, turn that 40 into 80, take out 40, right? Because you don't have to pay on your initial investment in any investment that you ever do. That goes for stocks and cryptocurrency. So if I take $40,000 and I put it in the market and it makes 80, I could take 40 back out. All right. You listening to me? I could yeah. take 40 out because I put 40 in. I don't pay no taxes on that. That's my money that I put in. I didn't, there's no capital gain on that because that's the money that I put in, put in my 40. I made 80 off of it because I made an investment in Bitcoin because Bitcoin doubled when I put in my 40, I take 40 out. I pay my loan back. Remember, we had we had a hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin in my other wallet on Coinbase. That was the only reason how I um, got the forty thousand dollars in the first place. I still have Bitcoin, so whatever my I still has a hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. I just borrowed against it. I took out forty percent of it. Doesn't mean I took out any of my Bitcoin. They just gave me collateral. They just gave me the money that I had that they're holding on their platform on the BTC. So we were at $100,000. Remember, Bitcoin doubled. So my $100,000 of Bitcoin is now $200,000. And I pay back my loan. So I have $200,000 in Bitcoin on this on this platform now. And then I have another 40 on the other platform that I took the first 40 from my initial investment on the other platform. I pay no taxes on none of that because that 40 was my initial investment because you're paying back your loan. You don't pay taxes on loans. OK, you keep that other 40 in Bitcoin, you keep that there and you start building on that. So now I have two hundred and forty thousand dollars plus I paid my loan that made me that 80. Did you follow me? Yeah, I'm writing this down. Mm -hmm. OK, that's just that's just a little hack. I mean, you don't have, you don't have to focus your whole life on that, but just know that's an opportunity for you to do something like that. If you were a person that was like, I don't know if Bitcoin is going to go up. Or I don't know if it's going to do this. I don't know if it's going to do that. You still have that opportunity to borrow against your Bitcoin, which is a strong thing in the financial institution space. So it's uh, it's once you have 100K, then you can um, borrow against your Bitcoin. Is that what you're saying? No. So you can you could borrow. You can, the smallest takeout you could take is $100 on Coinbase. Okay. So that means you would have to have. $250 worth of Bitcoin to take out $100, $100 loan, collateral loan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you could start off small if you wanted to, but you know, and you could just, you could, you could do that. Or if you have a job, you could take out the loan, get, put your Bitcoin, put your money in Bitcoin and then pay the money that you have from your job and then pay it, pay off your loan like that. You could do it however you want to, but you still got all three things. You have your Bitcoin in your Coinbase wallet, you have your loan, and then you have your new Bitcoin in your other wallet. Or that's game. Yeah, you, you can't you can't really lose. Like it's I don't I don't care what nobody says. You can't. <laughs> we not taking no L's. You feel me? We learning, we getting better, we getting smarter. You know, that's why they're trying to come out with all this extra shit to like you know, slow the world down because they're, they're, they're not ready to even speed up to the capabilities that most people are speeding up to these days. You feel me? So, you know, get it, get it while you can. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Marquise. For sure. Uh, I'm still trying to learn how to work Twitter spaces. So um, I'm looking at speakers at four. I have, six slots open so if you want to request to come up and speak 
I will allow you to do so. Let me click on this. Can now speak. Pool 100. Let me see. And uh, K. KHJ. Yes, sir. Yo, you good, bro? I give you enough information. I know it kind of. <laughs> It off. Yeah, bro. I'm still listening. You can, you can, you can kick me off, bro. No, no, no. I'm not trying to kick you off. I'm just saying that that I, you know, that I help. Oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you good? You, you got me right for sure. All right, but hey, this the thing though. You can't get off here and just like sit on it. You feel me? Oh no, 100. percent Gotta act on it. You gotta, you you gotta today, tomorrow. Like you gotta start it because yes, sir. Are already, already done, boss. I for got sure. it. For sure, man. And um, for the other people that wanted to learn about investing in real estate in different countries, you could definitely do that. We're going to talk about that probably in a few seconds. I want to talk about that for sure, because a lot of people are getting into the real estate game in America, which is great. I mean, yeah, it's great. That shit is expensive and too expensive, and it's old, and the land is not yours, and you're next to a bunch of people. It's just like, bro, why, why would you, like... I would I wouldn't do that. I me personally, I'm not knocking no real estate agent. I'm not knocking the United States, but it's just like why would you do that when you don't have to when you could build something way better, which y'all seen my Twitter. Yeah, it's made out of concrete. Okay, cool, but it's way better than a lot of people. I can build as high as I want up to four stories. You know what I mean? So we don't need too much. Now, let me see if I can add some people. Let's see. All right. Yeah, so if you want to if you wanna um, add yourself, I guess come up here or raise your hand. I don't know how this shit works, but whatever. Um, but so me personally literally just moved to a whole nother country. I'm going to talk about it. Moved to a whole nother country. I was paying so much money for these different places that I had in Miami and LA. And, you know, I was paying for these cars, these Lamborghinis and this and that, Euros and blah, blah, blah. I'm paying. Like my expenses, my expenses every month was literally, you know, anywhere from thirty thousand dollars up to on a on a good month, sixty-five thousand dollars a month is what people is paying out here. You feel me? And I felt at one point, I felt like it was good. It was fun. I was traveling this house everywhere I went. I had a home, you know, a condo, whatever. It was cool. $15,000 here, $3,000 here, $5,000 here, you know, because I hated kind of staying in hotels, like doing the whole hotel thing, traveling like that. And I already knew like the five places I was traveling, but my expenses was anywhere from 30 to 65 on on a good month if I'm doing the clubs and you know, festivals and buying shit for other people, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, you know, as I got smarter and I started talking to more billionaires and multimillionaires and, you know, just thinking about Nipsey, it just kind of brought me back to, yo, you tripping. Just because you got it don't mean you got to spend it. If anything, you're supposed to be doubling. And yeah, I was making money. I'm not making money on a daily basis, but it's like, are you making money to spend money or are you making money to make money to make more money and to make and, and to get the best out your money, the best bang for your buck? So what I learned was, is when you go to Toronto or when you go to Canada or when you go to Africa, or when you go to India, or when you go to Mexico, if you take a dollar, a dollar in their money can be split up either in a hundred ways or in 10 ways, or in a thousand different ways. So a dollar in Mexico is $17, all right? A dollar in Toronto is literally like a dollar 50 or something like that. A uh, dollar in the UK is like 80 cents. <laughs> so you got to know where to go. Your dollar stretch farther in different places. So if you take that analogy and you say, why would I Oh, yeah. And, and a dollar in the United States is not a dollar. It's probably, I, I give it like, what? What, what y'all want to give it? What y'all want to give it like 50 cent? Y'all want to give yeah, it like 50, 60 cent? <laughs> yeah, we want to give it like 50, 60 cent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead right now. 
<laughs> so we want to look at it like that. So it's like, okay, why am I spending my money here? Where I, okay, where I live. I don't know no better. I live where I live. I work where I work. I don't know shit outside of where I live at. Well, now you fucking listening. So you about to find out. Why don't I take my dollar that my dollar and my American dollar turns into $17 somewhere else? Why don't I take my money there? First thing people are going to say is that you're a capitalist and you need to, when you go to these countries, you need to tap in with the people that live there. So only do business from the people that are from there. Don't do business with Americans that move there and they say, yeah, I got, um, I have residency, like I got a dual citizenship. That's cool. So it, it would be like if I moved to Canada and I had, I got, I'm a Canadian now, I got a dual citizenship. And then I, I tell y'all to come over here and invest with me because Canada is a great opportunity place and it's cheap and I can show you these homes and you buy the homes from me, but I'm still an American. I would advise you guys to tap in with the people that are indigenous to the land, or you can tap in with the people that are actually from the land. They have to be from the land. That way you won't truly be a capitalist because you're working with the people that are from the land and it's only right and it's only fair. Um, so do business with them. Two, two ways you can do businesses with these people. Um, you, you fly over to wherever you're trying to go. You go there a couple times and you meet the people that are there. So one trip will be for just meeting people in the cities and having conversations with them. You can use their social media platforms. You can tweet out or you can find groups or however you want to do it. But just your first trip is to meet people, meet as many people as you can, talk to people, get numbers, see what they do for a living the first thing you want to do then you want to build connections second time you come over here you want to watch what i mean by watching is i mean going over and looking at different properties and looking at different businesses and looking at opportunity what is opportunity when you're driving by a certain community do you see homes that need fixing or do you see open plots of land that are for sale do you see people building in those areas where there's nobody at right now and it just looks really weird. It's a nice ass apartment complex or a condo and there's nobody living there and they're building more and more things right next to that place that you're driving by. You want to write down the construction company. You want to search the construction company. You want to get numbers. You want to see if they have people working on those um, spots every single day. Like those are the things you want to work at. First thing you want to know in business is you follow the money trail. Follow the money trail and you always become successful. If someone is building, that means people are coming. If people aren't coming and you build, people will come. I hope y'all caught that. Now, you could take your dollar once again and put it into another country and build in another country. So third world countries, what we talked about earlier, they have to come up. They have to. The same way I talked about when, you know, uh, blacks were kings and queens at one point, and then what? We became slaves, and then we're prospering. Now we're getting better and better, okay? The same way um, the weakest people in the world are some of the strongest people or the richest people in the world. That goes for athletes. You can talk about Le LeBron James. He came from nothing. Akron, Ohio. You could talk about what? Nipsey Hussle. He came from the what mud streets crenshaw district game banging he came from that 50 cent got shot nine times you could talk about you know there's a there's a bunch of stories mike tyson there's a bunch of stories of people that majority of the people that become successful really don't come from nothing including the person that made hot cheetos that was by accident he was a janitor machine spilled a whole bunch of cheetos on the ground he took them shits home put some hot whatever cayenne pepper on it and created hot cheetos now he's the president and ceo of i guess frito-lay or whatever company makes hot cheetos so what i'm what i'm telling you is is that the people at the bottom will eventually be the places and the people at the top they have no choice but to eventually rise from the slums and the only way they can i wouldn't say the only way they can do that the only way they can can truly do that is is new money comes in and they get the opportunity to learn education schools are built 
uh, more money are coming into the cities. The money is trickling down to the people in the village or people that lived in the area before. If they want to sell their homes, if you're building homes in their neighborhood, condos, the value of their property goes up. It gives them the chance to have somebody buy their home. They get a large sum of money and they can move to a better part of Mexico or they can move to a better part of uh, Canada. They can move to a better part of the community and they can do something, send their kids to college or buy better clothes or buy a car. Like they can level up too. They keep leveling up. It depends on how you look at it. Um, I will look at into moving or not necessarily moving, but just relocating to a different place. I've done it. I'm building in certain countries. It's fine. I haven't had any problems. It's cheap. I literally built a whole four story, beautiful, all glass place. Literally cost me 220. That's it. That's it cost me 220. Building the whole entire 20, 25 complex, two bedrooms. Some have three, 3.3 M. 3.3 M. Okay, I'm going to make $720,000 off that every single year. I'm going to get my money back in three years. And I'm not even going to take that money as profit. I'm just going to reinvest in more properties and keep flipping it and flipping it and flipping it. Flipping it and flipping it and flipping it until I'm making a certain amount of money every single month, which would be six figures once I retire doing this in 30 years. And I'll have 80 properties that I own, including the land and the buildings off a 3.3 M investment. You don't have 3.3 M's. You don't know a basketball player, a football player, a family member. or You don't have enough saved up and you don't invest in crypto. Cool. Start small. Get you a condo, buy you an apartment in these places, and rent it out on Airbnb. Because you got to understand that the population of the whole entire world is growing. When a population is growing, that means that people are being born and they need places to live. As the internet gets faster, transportation gets faster and better, more people are going to be traveling than sitting dormant. They're not going to be sitting in their homes. More people are going to be traveling. The world. The world is going to be a traveling place if we get to live to that point. But if you guys know, it's going to be a traveling place that goes for work, that goes for people exploring, that goes for people that, you know, want to get out more. If you go to the airport, you don't see many black people at the airport. For every 200 people on the flight, it might be 10 black people on it, maybe maybe 15. Like I said, what comes from the bottom is going to have to grow and flourish. There's new airports being built. There's new trains being built. There's there's a lot of things going on that you guys don't see behind the scenes, but it's happening. And I see it happening. I literally, I'm not going to tell you where I'm at, but I went to the jungle. I went miles deep into the jungle. And I'm going to give you guys some information really quick. All right. I'm going to give you guys some information that I have. Uh, where is it? I took a picture of it. All right. Here it is. I want you guys to. Take this name down, all right? S-O-T-H-E-B-Y-S. S-O-T-H-E-B-Y-S. Is it uh, Sotheby's? Sotheby's? Sotheby's International... What is this? Realty. Look up that company. When I went miles deep into the jungle, these people were building complexes in the middle of the jungle. These people. On the on the other side, on the other side where where I thought I thought I was building in the right place, they're building on the other side where there's no people over there. And nobody travels on that side right now. No, only people travel on this side where I'm at. And and this, I thought this was the location to be until somebody took me across the road to the other side, deep in the jungle. And th- that's the place to be because he gave me some information. I'm not going to tell you all what he told me, but I did give you the company. and You can do your own research and look at their holdings. But there's there, there, this, this place is going to be putting something in the area. That's going to allow people to 
travel a little bit better in this area, which means people need places, nice places to say rich people are going to be here. People that are in college, people that have jobs and they're going to be able to afford a nice vacation a spot to say, as long as it looks good, they can take pictures on Instagram and they feel comfortable. They're going to pay whatever the cost is. Cause it's a, it's a vacation. You don't, when you're on a vacation, you don't really care what the cost is. As long as it looks better than the place that you currently stay at your house. So, and it's close to where everything is. So these are the things that I'm doing. These are the things that you can do. I, I encourage people to do it because they're giving you the land here and they're allowing you to build at a at a cheap rate, super cheap rate. And uh, I also partner with two companies out here where I am. The two companies I partner with, I guess what two companies I partner with? Guess what two? And I'm working on the third, but guess the two that I partner with? I partner with a laundromat. It's the first thing I partner with because the first place I went to, I partnered with a laundromat. See, it's a it's a little old lady, nice, sweet little old lady. She has a laundromat. I took my clothes there. She weighed she weighed my clothes and told me the price. I said, "Oh my God, you're 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 charging me by the how, how much it weighs and not by by piece." She tells me, "Yes." I'm like, okay, you're the only laundromat around here? She's like, no, it's another one down the street, but we're the only two in this area. I said, oh, okay, bet, cool. Got our number. We chopped it up. We got something in the works. Another company is a taco stand. They cut down all the weeds and the trees and this plot of land. They cut it all down. They put gravel and rocks on top of it. They put some nice chairs up. They put some lights up, and they got like a little trailer, which they cook the, the tacos out of, and they play music. Nice spot. I was ordering tacos are bomb, right? I don't drink soda and I don't drink water. I mean, I do drink water, but when I, I'm sorry, I said that. <laughs> I, I drink water, guys. I have to. I wouldn't be alive, all right? But when I'm drinking my when I'm drinking my tacos, I want something nice and sweet. So I was like, okay, do you have juice? She said, no, I don't have juice. I'm gonna get it. I said, okay, cool. I came. I came back like five, six days later, got some more tacos. I'm like, you got juice? She's like, no. Came back two weeks later. I asked her, you got juice? You know what she said to me? She said, why don't you get the juice and uh, you can sell it here and I'll sell it for you. That's what she. That's what this lady brilliant. said. That's brilliant. I was like, I really, you know, I'm just here to relax. I'm not always business minded when I'm over here. I'm just chilling. I ain't trying to be a capitalist or nothing. She said it to me. So what I did was I, the name of her company, I, I reversed the name and I just put juice at the end. So it's her company's name and juice. So she's, we're going to split the profits after the distribution and all that. We're going to split the profits and she's going to be selling juice now. At her taco stand, she has about a hundred, maybe hundred fifty people that show up every single day. Okay, and you know I'm pick the right juices. I'm gonna get the lemonade, the strawberry. You know I'm gonna hook it up with the juice. I'm gonna make sure they sell out. Okay, so another business venture. Another business venture is uh, ATVs and buggies and scooters because people need to get around. Get in a taxi or you know riding taxis are not as safe. Because it's on, it's it's by a certain company and it's not a real company. It's it's, it's by the mafia or whatever. So if a cute girl gets in, like ain't no telling if you're gonna come back if you're not with a guy, you know, I don't know. So that's that's real talk, you know. It's 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 a it's a fifty fifty chance. So most people ride bikes or they walk. That's how serious it is. But uh opening the ATV in the scooter business. I looked up how much scooters cost over where I am and for a scooter that goes 50 miles per hour, it's a thousand dollars. A brand new one. If I got 10 scooters, okay, 10. If I just got 10 scooters, I'm not even talking about ATVs, I'm not talking about none of that. If I got 10 scooters, I'm renting them out for people. Let's say if I charge $20 a day, $30 a day, and I got 10, 30 times 10, they're all gonna be rented out for sure. You don't even have to worry about that. They're going to be rented out. 30 times 10 is $300 a day. Okay? 
Some people are going to rent them out for a month. Some people are going to rent them out for a week. Nobody's going to drive a $30 scooter just to get around for a day and then drop it off. Let's be real. 300 times 30 is $9,000. It's $10,000 a month off of 10 scooters. I didn't bring up ATVs. I didn't bring up buggies. I didn't bring up, you know, if I put a GoPro on it. I didn't bring up, you know, a tour. I didn't bring up none of that. Okay? So these are the things that I am getting into. You can get into if you have a rich uncle or a rich grandma, or grandpa, or maybe you got a rich husband or whatever. Start thinking outside of America. Start traveling. Start thinking about business and helping other people or collaborating in different places because it's here. If you're not the best basketball player in America, if you're the 100th best basketball player in the NBA, you're going to be the number one basketball player wherever you go. In Spain, Brazil, you're going to be balling. Okay? So you need to look at it from that perspective. Just because you're not the best over here, you can be the best somewhere else. Go where you're needed. Go where people need you. And that's all I really have to say. I've been on this probably too long. But that's all I really wanted to say, honestly. Hope that helps. Helps tremendously. This is awesome. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for the information you're sharing. You got me wanting to move there just to open a scooter business. <laughs> Make $10,000 a month. I'm telling, you. <laughs> I'm telling you. We was only talking about 10 scooters. Like, you can have 20, 30, like. Yeah. ATV go for more, buggies go for more, but just I'm just And you can do it with it, somebody locally and they and hire them yeah, to manage yep, it for you. You don't even have yep, to do it. Just set it up. Yep. Yep. Have a whole family there. Ain't nobody gonna steal a bike from a exactly. family of twelve or fifteen, like and they from there anyway. So it's like it's 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 so much better opportunities in other places like I know that we looking at what's in front of us and what's around us and we probably thinking like how, but just remember this. I didn't know anybody when I came over here. I didn't do any research. I didn't Google anything. I just came over here. I drove around. I looked around. I asked around and I connected with people that I felt like in my heart were the best people. Now you might find some people that are going to manipulate you or try to scam you or whatever. That's why you need to kind of do things on your own and just ask people to you know, guide you. Um, when you're doing business in other countries, you have to do it with a person that's native to that land. If you want to do a deal with them one on one or you have to do it through the banks of that country. So that means they hold the titles to your real estate. They hold the titles to your business. Now, a bank is not going to mess you over, quote unquote. A bank is not going to mess you over. They hold your titles because you're not a residency of that place. But if you're a residency, you hold your own titles because you, you're from that country, you're from that land. So this is when I was talking about dual citizenship. So pick the right place and you know go there and build. Take what you know over here. If, if you're if you're a if you're not the best American over here, you're gonna be the best wherever you go. If you guys understand what I'm saying. I have a question for you, Marquise. Um, I went over to India in 2018 um, and met with folks over there in the tech park in Comatora. And um, looking to um, utilize them for my uh, brand um, to help with the call center and everything. Um, is there a specific person that you utilize when you were over there? Because I'm looking to try to buy some property over there. That way I can establish, you know, a business there. Um, I was told that that would be the best way um, to go about doing it. And um, so I wanted to know um, how, how did that work for you when you went over there? to India. So when I went over there, I already kind of knew people just from my Instagram, my Twitter, people hit me up all the time. There's people from Bollywood. Those are the first people I connected with. So when I got on social media, the reason how I knew that to connect with different countries, this was the whole entire reason. I'm going to give you all the pinpoint reason on why I connected with other countries rather than the United States. It's because that People did not like my pictures and people didn't appreciate me in America because they were bougie or they felt like they knew who I was or they felt like I was getting too much of something. So when people put a ceiling on top of your head, they say, oh, he got 40,000 likes. I ain't going to like that because he already got 40. 
why would I give him more? I'm not going to like it because he already getting too much love. I'm not going to comment because he already getting too much love or this or that. And then when I did a little research and I looked at people over in India with less followers that got more engagement, I'm like, okay, those people over there, they don't have anything to do. They sit on their phones all day long. They don't, you know, they don't have the luxury that us Americans have, but they appreciate things a little bit more. Now they're not, they might not be consumers, quote unquote. They're not going to buy anything. Like I, a, a influencer company won't do any justice with me trying to do some influencer marketing with me if I have a bunch of followers from India or Brazil because they're not going to consume anything because they're at the bottom, right? They don't have enough money to purchase $300, $400 headphones. Like they're not doing that over there. So I traded in the United States consumers. I trade them in for India, Brazil, and, uh, you know, people over in Iran I trade. I rather deal with those people, even though they don't buy anything. I don't care because I'm not selling nothing. I just want people to appreciate me. So I started getting into those markets and getting those people and start targeting those people, and they appreciate me a little bit more because they're looking at me like an American with a blue check, and he does this, play basketball. Oh snap! And he commenting on my thing, or he followed me, or he did it. Like it's way more appreciation, and so I get way more love from those people and some of them speak english and some of them know how to do social media marketing and some of them know how to get press some of them they, like some of them hustle over there so i started building relationships with them so that's how i got my connections over there that's awesome thank you yeah and i, and yep. I got to connect over there too that's why i went in 2018 and he helped me out, you know, set up the meetings, um, showed me like you were you were right about the land where you could potentially develop stuff. Um, I was able to get a name of um, some um, some of the developers over there locally because um, and the reason why I chose that location was because of the tech park It's very similar to Silicon Valley, but it's like their version. And um, mm -hmm. it's dope. So I agree with you 100%. That, and I, when I was over there, I felt so much love. Even like going through security, it's like, oh, look at your hair because my hair is silver. And they were like complimenting me. There was people stopping and taking pictures with me and stuff like that. And you, you definitely feel the love more over there. You do. Yeah, the love is there for sure. So let me see how this works, man. Let's see. I just added. I just added some new people, so I don't even know. Um, Y'all can speak, but I'm. I'm gonna get off really soon. But you guys can speak if you want to. Just FYI, I had two people message me saying that uh, they weren't able to hear. But honestly, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just space is really broken. <laughs> yeah, I know mine is broken for sure with all the followers I have. I know they're not sending this out to all the people. I know they're not. Um, I'm welcoming the new people to the to the stage. If you guys can hear me, yeah. Hey, I'm here, Marquis. You really inspired me with the uh, the talk about creating a business in another country. So I was starting to think about Mexico because my girl she has family there, but there's not many jobs where she lives. And I was thinking, what would be a good idea for creating? some kind of business to kind of help the people out or at least her family to get going and make their own money. So what I've learned from Mexico so far is that distribution from farming, farming is a top thing here. And another thing is that, can you guys hear me? Yes or no? Just say anybody say yes or no. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you good. Yes. Okay, cool. So farming is top and farming can be anything from distribution from fruits, plants, and even tequila. Now they do farm other things, but I wouldn't get into that. But if you do a little bit more research, uh, Mexico just, they are getting into legalizing marijuana or they did just legalize marijuana and they are the number one, Mexico is the number one distribution for marijuana. Now, I'm not saying get into that, but I'm saying they are working towards that. Um, another thing is tequila, and the other thing is agricultural farming, which is fruits. So selling fruits in the neighborhood, selling fruits to restaurants, anything of that nature. If they're close to anything like Mexico City or Tijuana 
or Cancun or Cabo or Tulum, they can get into dealing with tourists, doing anything for tourists. So anything that you think a tourist would need, I would cater to the people that come to the city. There are no apps really in all of Mexico. No apps. So anything that's created in America, you can literally duplicate it and put it in Mexico. Literally. Literally. You could duplicate it. Now, I wouldn't try to get big because, you know, they do have the cartel and the mom and, you know, all that. So if, you, if you're going to get big like that, you need to tap in with f at least four out of seven out here you need to you need to know to know to know somebody like for real know somebody not no street punk i'm talking about really know somebody to where you know you paying your dividends or you making sure you good or paying whoever you need to pay but they they kicked uber out and created their own thing it's called tomato <laughs> and they deliver our everything um if that's for Uber Eats and for taxis, it ain't no, they tried to do Uber and they kicked them out. So there's no Uber and there's no Uber Eats, but there is tomato and you do have the taxi service. So that just gives you a, um, you know, an idea on where everything is out here. Did that uh, help you? Uh, who was that? The the black skin? Yeah, that was me. I appreciate that because where she actually, her family's from is kind of run by the mafia. So it's kind of, I was thinking it's kind of sketchy to start a business because they're going to be taxing you. But they do have kind of protection from them because one of their uncles builds houses. So that's a good connection down there to kind of be able to run a business smoothly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely for sure. If you have a person that does something like that, I mean, I would invest in him, um, and him getting, you know, maybe his own machinery, or maybe if he's the one building houses, maybe he can build y'all a house. Y'all invest and he build a house, and y'all can Airbnb it out, or like I would try to do something like that, or maybe just help him as far as his business is concerned, get him banners, or maybe create a website for him where he can get more business and hire more people. That way he can hire, teach and hire more people that's in his community and just put everything under his umbrella. Yeah, that sounds a good, like a good idea. I just want to make sure that it's separate from that other side business he's doing with those certain people because I don't want to get mixed up in none of that. Yeah. I mean, it ain't. I mean, to be honest with you, if if you if you make headlines, if you're if if you're invisible to them, it's it's no way you can get around it. If you're too small, nobody's even like you ain't making nothing. You ain't they ain't tripping off you like whatever. But you know, if you were trying to do real business and they know what's going on, they're gonna come at you anyway. And there is no, to be honest, there is no really saying no. You know, at the end of the day, it's just about the deal that you get or your explanation or what you can offer. Yeah, I appreciate the ideals, bro. I see you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Also, I have a question because I see you follow so many people. How in the world do you do it, bro? Because you're following me, like, since 2018. Yeah, so uh, when I first got on Twitter 2009, my first spark in my head, when I first got on Twitter... When, I, when they first told me about it and I made an account, I looked at it and I said, so when I make an account, people follow me and they stay there? And they were like, yeah. So I was like, so every time I tweet, the people that follow me see my tweet every single time. And he said, yeah. Because remember, I came from my space. MySpace don't have a didn't have a timeline. MySpace, you just went to people's pages. You page to page to page to page. Twitter introduced to me the first timeline. And when I saw a timeline and when I noticed that it while well, my stuff went to everybody every single time, I was like, okay, I'm about to follow everybody. I'm following everybody. It wasn't no rules there, and it wasn't how long they didn't did it take? Think nobody was going. Did you hit a follow uh, following limit? Most people don't know about that. I didn't. I, I didn't did. hit a following. I didn't hit a following limit because there wasn't. There was no such thing at that time. I bet you're the reason. So, and I was. <laughs> and, 
Yeah, yeah, I am. I probably am. But the reason the reason why I never hit a follow limit is because I grew followers first and then I followed people. But there was no limit. So I was able to follow anywhere from 10 to 20,000 people a day. I believe it was probably more. And I would follow them by myself. I would take my um, my first two fingers and I would just tap. I would just tap on the phone and I would turn the speed up. So, you know, on the iMac, you could touch that little pad, but you can turn the speed up on it. So if you click it, it'll click a little bit faster. So I turned the speed up on my pad and then I would use my two fingers and I would just follow everybody. So every time I follow somebody, it would move up to the next person and I would just follow, follow, follow. I would do that all day. I would watch TV and just my two fingers would just be tapping. Now, everybody that I follow, I promise to God, is strategically followed. I didn't follow random people. Now, I did get into some XXX situation because I, I didn't want to, I wanted to have a diverse following. I wanted, I wanted to reach people from different demographics. So I do have some like X-rated people that I'm following, like, you know, even some, you know, LBT, uh, LGBT community stuff. I don't know how you say it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I even have some of those people that I'm following. There's some crazy stuff on my timeline sometimes, but um, I literally follow everybody because of keywords that you used. So you either used a word that uh, was significant to me, whether it was an artist, whether it was a t- basketball team, or whether it was, you know, a certain keyword. I target all of you. So you guys used a certain keyword or you followed a certain person and I followed you based on that because we have the same similarities so so you created your own algorithm basically basically yeah and are you still doing that and following that many people on a daily no no. so the limit they have a limit now so the limit works like this if you have ten thousand followers you might can follow twelve thousand but you cannot follow over the more followers than you have and there's a daily limit so no one can ever reach the amount of followers that I that I follow ever on in the history of Twitter ever again. So I, I someone was trying to do it and I was I they tweeted me and then I tweeted them. I was like, that's not even possible. Yeah, um hey, you changed it. but you're still able to follow people. Whoa, no, sorry. I can't follow anybody. Really? I can't either. Yep. So if you yeah if you if you're not from the OG days or if I didn't target you I can't, I can't follow you. Even if you're a new person. You've been following me for like a good six years. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's all strategic. I know a lot of people are like, yo, he just follow people. It's like, nah, it's really strategic. Like who I follow. Um, there's a, actually a Twitter finally set a definite limit. Um, it's like 5,000 something. So I, this is a topic that uh, as a much smaller Twitter user has been a thing for me because I follow people for like, Basically, if I if you tweet something funny, I, you know, I would I would have just followed you. I haven't been able to follow anyone since 2017. Um, but <laughs> uh, like people, because li- li- you like, follow so many people, that's why you can't follow anybody. Yeah, let me get specific. So there is actually a Twitter health document. If you if you Google Twitter following limit, um, or I, maybe it's just follow limit. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a, spe- a document that will tell you specifically how many people. Uh, and so anytime I try to follow someone there, it, I get a thing that says you can't follow any more people right now. Um, it will happen to you even if you don't, uh, do that two finger wizard, <laughs> wizardry. Uh, uh, that's one thing that, uh, Twitter was very negligent about that. They, they did not have any public facing documents saying that for years. So people would literally not believe me. Um, yeah, that's it. Sorry, it's a peeve of mine. There's literally a quick link in my link tree that goes to a document explaining this because just so you, the people that followed me today, just so you know, I can't follow you back. Uh, I'll probably put you on a list, though. Have you ever talked about lists? Marquis? No, not yet. This is my first this is my first Twitter spaces, man. So, man, maybe well, I, meant, like, I get on generally. Oh, no, 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 no. That's crazy. You don't even follow that many people. Say, bro, I had a, uh, I got a question for you. Yeah, for sure, King. Listen. Um, have you ever been to Ghana? Ghana, man, Ghana was one of the places on my list. 
uh, Ghana and uh, what, what, what other places on my target list, man? Um, I was trying to, I, I'm real big into like Africa, you know, like black history. I was trying to, I was really on what you was talking about, about like how getting land. I heard they giving out like free visas and free land to like uh, African Americans. Uh, well, how do I say it? Africans of the American diaspora, you know, they recognizing people, well, African Americans who have been, you know, been captured or slave, you know, all that stuff. Right. They said they're giving them free visas and free land to those, to uh, Africans of the American diaspora. I was just trying to see if you tapped into that because I'm trying to get into that. No, I actually haven't, man. But Ghana is on my list, though. So, I really, I really don't speak about things unless I'm being spoken to about it, and then I'll bring it up. But I try not to like just share every goddamn thing, um, all in one damn, you know, speaking because it's be it's so much information. But Africa is I, people. Some people get mad at me for this, but Africa is my last place to go to. To be honest with you. Africa Why is it? Uh, Africa is my last because that's the last that's the place where I want to just like because I'm I'm not um where I'm at right now I'm still like in a moving speed business growth money like I'm still I'm still attached to the system even though I'm getting out of it but I'm still attached to it when when I go to Africa I don't want to be, I don't want, I don't even, I, I don't want to be attached or thinking about no social media, no business, no nothing. I just want, I just want to have it and I just want to live my life and just be free and, you know, just, I really want to be one with that place when I go. I don't want to have the mind that I have. I, I'm just different though. Everybody don't have to be, do what I do. If I was different, I would go earlier. But the things that I'm doing right now, I feel like it's not fair to to me or even even fair to the motherland on where my brain is right now and where I'm at to truly enjoy it. To be honest with you, just that's just me, though. I feel the same way. Ultimately, I want to go to Congo. Um, that's where. Um, you know, through my father's DNA anyway, um, that makes up the most of who I am. And, and I want that to be my final place too. And, mm -hmm. but I do want to visit at least to kind of get a feel, you know, like take a vacation there. But yeah, I, I totally feel you on that. Yeah. I want to, I want to be all the way one when I get there. I don't like, I'm talking about like, I don't want to go too deep in detail on my thoughts on what I'm be planning on doing when I get older and stuff, but it's just like I'm talking about like not wearing white beater t-shirts and pants and you know not wearing shoes and stuff. I'm like really I'm like I'm like on that type of time when I when I get there. I really want to drop I want to drop another layer of my skin and be you know one. I'm not saying like go indigenous or nothing, but I don't want to wear the same type of clothes that I wear that I've been wearing all my life. I don't want to wear those anymore. When I get to that place, I want to be more freer. I want to learn more about medicine. I want to learn more about, you know, people in the jungle, like stuff like that. That That's what I'm going to be on when I get there. Even if I can get into a tribe, maybe like, you know, that's the shit that I'm going to be on when I get to the age. I feel like right now I my heart and my body and my mind is not there right now, even though it can be there. I could do it just to be doing it, you know, take pictures and be like, oh, yeah, I did this. But I'm not settled in my mind. I'm not settled in my body. I'm not settled with my finances right now. So that's the reason why I'm not going this early. But it is on my on my on my list. I am going there and I am going to, you know, I'm going to be there. King. Uh, I don't know what happened to you, but it said you became a listener and now uh, you requesting. Let me see if I can work this real quick. Uh, King. King. Okay. All right. 
I don't know. You went back as a listener. I, okay. All right. Sorry, y'all. Hold on. I have it's eight people that are speakers, two open spots. I tried to add King. I tried to add you back. You went down back to the list. I know Blacks again. I don't know if you moved yourself back down. I don't know what this thing is doing, but I can. Can you um, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think you can. What's happening? What's up? What's up? Let's see. So when Twitter spaces break, this is kind of what happens. Uh, an individual space will often get to the point where it just breaks, and the only way to fix it is to start an entirely new one, which, unfortunately, you can't just migrate people over. I just wanted to say that. I'm going to step down, but it was uh, cool and weird to talk to you. Mark, you I don't know like, if you can like, hear yeah. me, but um, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Um, this is my first time speaking on this space, so... Yeah, I stumbled upon it, and uh, I'm thoroughly interested and impressed. Um, first of all, okay, can can people hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> I can, can I see an emoji if you can hear me. You sound Something. like me. We can hear yeah. you. But, we, we can hear you. Oh, yeah, great. Oh, you're so, good. We can hear I'm you. from Zambia. Zambia is a country in Africa. Yeah. So I've been listening to everything. I think not so many people are from Africa in this space. So I was listening to all the business um, businesses that Marquis was talking about. And yeah, it's a, a whole different place. <laughs> Except what you said about not coming to Africa now. But at the moment, I think people are evolving. And it's not everything that everyone from the Western, from the Western places thinks it is. Um, let me take, for instance, like Zambia. Um, I myself uh, is very interested in business, especially like agriculture. I do, I do a little bit of farming. Here and there, uh, poultry farming, eggs, uh, what else? Maize, vegetables, different different types of things, really. And most people think um, if you're doing farming, you're poor and whatnot. I mean, it's not it's not it's not all in all like that. I think I DM'd Marquis and I was telling him about a, an opportunity. Like, for instance, like here in Zambia, not so many people have ventured into like businesses because, I mean, most of like our population is very, I'd say not too many people are successful. Yeah, the system kind of doesn't really like favor people to be successful the way, you know, Americans and other Western places, you know, have like opportunities really. I mean, opportunity is there. You have to just make the most of it. I think one thing that we don't have is funding. I mean, the government doesn't really, like, make it possible to fund people. Like, what you guys get, like, stimulus checks and everything. Yeah, so you really have to, like, you know, make it work for yourself. So what I just don't appreciate about, or what I can say I appreciate, is kind of like an insightful vision I DM Mark, he's talking about, like, um, if anybody from this space came to Zambia right now, bought a piece of land, a couple of hectares, per se, I started to, you know, do any type of business, like farming. You know, it doesn't just necessarily have to be farming, but I'm just referring to this particular business, because, like, it's uh, it's large scale, really. Yeah, so if you're doing farming and maybe you're growing maize, corn or something and decided you wanted to make flakes, cornflakes, believe me, you'd be a millionaire in a year. If you're growing maize, I said, then decided to process your, your corn and start making, you know, flakes, you'd be a millionaire. If you came to Africa and decided you wanted to make a restaurant with your own, you know, 
menu and different types of things. I'd give you uh, maybe even a year. A year, yeah, you'll be a millionaire. And what I've observed about, you know, this place or places in Africa, most of the people who are building, like, uh, successful businesses are not even people from around here. You know, like nightclubs, different types of things, really. Whatever business it is, you know, even car hiring, you know, the the thinking space is endless, depending on whatever business you, you'd want to get in, whatever you're interested in, really. So, especially, I think I joined the space when he was talking about um, real estate. Real estate is number one, without a doubt. A lot of people, I think it's recent that I'm so noticing that uh, doing Airbnb, people are building like apartments and, you know, renting them out and whatnot. And this is just like, you know, 24 hours. It could be maybe mm, three days, but nothing more than that. So I think you really have to grow your mindset and your perspective and I was just thoroughly interested on to speak about this, you know, him talking about investing in other countries, especially African countries. And I think at the end of the day, I think the most important thing that you have to understand is it's not just about um, making money for yourself, but how you're impacting lives and changing lives. And this one you're going to notice that you enjoy your success, your money, your brand and whatever it is that you're going to build here. I think if you don't have kids, if you have kids, you definitely leave something for them, like something for them to learn from. So it's, you know, there's so much I can go on and on about, but I was just trying to, I was just trying to appreciate his thinking and perspective really. Um, talking about other countries, investing in other countries and all that. You know, yeah. This is my first time speaking on a space, so... Yeah, there's so much uh, I could go on. I think I'll just give some chance to other people to speak. Appreciate Thanks. you, uh, Sir Jamie. Uh, that was really good and good information. And also, you're uh, very aware and very smart because I've been on Clubhouse for, let's just say, a year. And there are some people that get on some people's stages and they'll talk and there'll be speakers and they'll talk all day long, their first time. They'll talk so much and they'll just keep talking and talking and talking to where people will leave the room and stuff. But you actually said what you wanted to say. You wanted to say more. You have to say more. But you actually stopped yourself from talking and understood that you did have a lot of floor time and said, hey, I'm going to yield the floor. I'm going to allow the conversation to continue and I'll add on and I'll still stay in the space. That takes a smart person to do that. And this is your first time being on this platform on Twitter Spaces. So congratulations to you on that. Just I don't know what you do or where you come from or who raised you or, you know, what's your background. But that's. Mm, it, it says a lot about you as a person to know how to do that already. There's a lot of people that don't have the etiquette. See, I've run many rooms teaching people how to moderate, just how to be a moderator alone, how to control your rooms, how to talk intros. So I appreciate you for that. I also appreciate you for the information that you gave and the add on to the conversation that I was um, talking about and investing in other countries. So appreciate it. Let's see, man. I'm trying to uh, let me get King back up here real quick. Let me see if they's gonna add you, man. You add it, King. You there, King? Yeah, I'm here, God. All right. I don't know what happened, but yeah. Yeah, you was you was responding and you just shut off. Uh, I mean, I know this signal's been on and off for a while, so yeah. Yeah, um, 
I was gonna make that trip this year, but I'm I'm, a, I'm on my second kid, so you know how that goes. Check out the yeah, later. Yeah, man, that means just do more research and do more preparation. That's all that means. Yeah, that's every day, man. If y'all will go follow my brand, Super Unlady Night. Go check out my website, superunlady93.com. Y'all go fuck with the guy. For sure, for sure. Anybody else that wanted to speak before I dip off and disappear and get back to what I was doing? I just wanted to come up here and drop some gems, drop some knowledge, some game. What's up, Marquis? It's Roman. Roman from Gub House. <laughs> <laughs> you know I got to say from Clubhouse. Yeah, exactly. Roman from Clubhouse, man. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. Just a lot of work, man. I'm doing a lot of work out here, man. I'm very um I'm very inspired. I'm very I'm very surprised. I'm very shocked. I'm very upset. I'm very um I'm I'm, I'm I got to hustle more. I need more money. It's um when it's 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 like it's like going to it's like going it's like dying and finding out everything is fake you know yeah yeah that's what it that's what it feels like and it feels like america uh, america feels free but it's not it feels like there's so much room and opportunity, but it's not. It's really just a conquered area. It's, it's already conquered. Now, you can go up north. You can go Midwest, but tornadoes and stuff happen there. You can go on the plains, South Dakota, North Dakota, uh, you know, places that a lot of uh, population is not really there. But most people are surrounded by the edges of the United States, Los Angeles, uh, Houston, Louisiana, Florida. You got some people at the top or Chicago and New York, but most people are around the edges. If you haven't really noticed, if you, if you, if you create, if you draw a line around the curve of the United States, majority of the top populations are the people that live on the edge. And, uh, you know, just being in a different country, man, has opened up my eyes so much. The opportunity is so high. It's, it's immensely high. Like, it's it's to be honest with you, it's too high. I, I couldn't believe it. The, the the thing is though, I know Marquise. Now you're thinking, hey, I have to make up for lost time and kind of feel like you know you've been, you know, like delayed a little bit. But the way I look at it is, with the states, United States, it's definitely a fertile ground to learn, to build, and then you can explore and go out there. So I I don't think that. Um, that it's been all bad in that in that sense, meaning I think you needed to go through a journey here and then now you can kind of branch off and utilize some of the, you know, some of your experience and talent and education here and knowledge and then take it to the next level. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. I don't I I look at it how you how you're looking at it, but it's just like it's kind of like when you you know, when you come out the hood and then you finally understand business in America, you know, I feel like that all over again. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. See, you get what no, I do. I do. I've been fortunate myself is when I, you know, finished college, I ended up moving to Mexico and I lived there for two years. And so it, it, it brought me a different perspective, right? Getting away from that American centric, America's the best, you know. And, 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 and understanding that things are different and more creative and there's more flexibility and you can see that people are treated differently. And so that helped me over the years. So I know that, you know, living somewhere or spending time and traveling and visiting different places does provide you that. And if you don't necessarily get that, you have a mind that's limited for sure, for sure. And so I'm, I'm happy that now you exploring and now you can you know, more than 10 X, you know, 50 X, the goodness that you can provide to the world. I want to ask you guys a question. WhatsApp is free. Telegram is free. Twitter is free. Instagram is free. Facebook is free for communication, texting, messaging, everything. Why are we still paying for a T-Mobile Sprint, 
and all of these places. Yes, they provide the service, but why isn't it cheaper? It should be, I should be paying $15 a month just for the service alone. Why are they continuing to keep the prices so high? Capitalizing um, on us. You need data. Honestly, I was actually researching this topic. Um, so that's actually really crazy. So it's because, you know, you know how the internet works. It's, it's not really, you know, Wi-Fi is a bunch of lines in the oceans and stuff. So all of those are owned by all of these huge companies. And I was literally saying, you know, how, how much we pay for, like, Wi-Fi. And that's, that's really where we're at in the world right now. But because there, there's no um, publicly owned line for the internet all of it is privately owned by at&t centurylink you know verizon all, all over the world including you know so they could literally and i was telling someone they could literally if they wanted to because they own it could hike up the prices and say you pay two thousand dollars a month and people would have to unless they did not want the internet and because the internet is so much of a utility now to where you have to have it a lot of people they work you know, their their entire life is on the internet. So, um, and companies are like y'all saying, is capitalizing off of that. They know that there are people who cannot survive, literally, without this man-made, you know, invention. So they know that they can price gouge you, essentially. It's crazy that you say that, and you say that you was just talking about that, and I just brought it up. The same thing with David. It was crazy. But um, I was just thinking about this. I was like, yo, we don't need texts and call like they look, we have social media and they're giving it to us for free. All we have to do is download the app or li literally not even download the app. But and then what are you gonna do? Go stop at a McDonald's yeah. or go stop at a place so that you can go and get exactly. your messages or Go and reply to your emails, especially if you work on the internet. You need that. You and like he was saying, if those prices get hiked up to two thousand dollars a month, there's nothing you could do about it because you need that. You need that source in order to get your work complete, or in order to advertise, or in order to do the things that you want to do in order to get that money in your pocket. Yeah, and I know speaking specifically because um, y'all were talking about southern states and how uh, you know. Uh, you'd be surprised. Well, I guess because I live in South Mississippi, it's not as big. Uh, it's not really. When you think of Southern states, you do, you know, you think of Texas, Louisiana. You don't really think of Mississippi and Alabama. You bypass those and go to Georgia and Florida. And that's pretty much how it looks if you was to drive through it. It looks like <laughs> everywhere is populated. Then you cross Louisiana, that line, and you mm -hmm. get to coastal Mississippi, where there should be. I mean, we have casinos, but. That's about as much fun as you can, you know, as much industry as we have going here. And um, because of that, you know, they, they, they are able to, because there's not a lot of opportunity for people who to think, they don't, they don't give you the opportunity to think broader. They feed you what they feed you across the America, I assume. But they feed you that this is what it is, and we have this, and... All of this has been done for you, basically, and and a lot of the opportunities are reserved for um, just different people. And so they and so like when you were talking about gatekeeping, that happens a lot out here, like a lot. Like I, I was watching this um, show, and this guy he was um, using his internet connection and broadcasting across like a lot of places in rural in rural Mississippi do that, but. Here, you're actually not allowed to broadcast your, you know, your internet connection. That's a breach of contract. They'll cancel your service and fine you for that. That's a crime. You'll go to jail. <laughs> like, so, and, and so they, and so they do that. And I feel like it's, um, it's target. It is targeting. And because, um, Mississippi and Alabama, they're not thought about as much. Um, you if you were to like, like internet here is very expensive and it doesn't do the job at all. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like there's a lot of places we go, internet's 3G, then 4G, then 5G. 
and then LTE. It's like I'm paying my $60 or my $100 or my $80. It's $80 and $100 and $60 every month. I need my LTE to be on no matter where the hell I go. I don't care if I'm underground in the elevator. That shit needs to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it won't. And, and, and if you don't pay and for it. Feel- data in your pocket imagine how you would feel without the data in your pocket where you would need to go to a starbucks or a mcdonald's or a 7-eleven or somewhere i'm in canada so there's probably different places around here that have wi-fi versus the states but i know starbucks and i know mcdonald's does because i was out in california so i mean like what are you gonna do wait on your wait on like wait at a red light to quickly check that email like nah that's not realistic you know what i mean and just off the strength that people need that they're going to sit there and they're going to spike the charges up whenever they get that feeling or whenever they want to, really. They can do it whenever they want. Yeah, and the biggest thing, it's so hard to get into that industry because and whenever I found that out and I found out about all the lines and about how it's operated, I, I, my next Google search was how do you <laughs> build one and who do you talk to and how do you sanction that? And, like, honestly, and first of all, you have to go through them because for, for me, my the people who on our line that runs, that connects this entire region um, is, the owner is it for us is Sparklight. So for me to, basically what I read was for me to basically build my own internet line, I would have to get a lease from them. I would have to. There's no other way because... That is the super highway. They've already built that infrastructure. Unless I wanted to myself take on the undertaking of building underground wires throughout the entire world. And I yes. personally cannot do that. That's why I said, but but you won't see. You're going to need to hire a big crew for that. Yeah, okay. Um, it's called Helium. It's a crypto company, and they have these little hot spots. If my neighbor has a hot spot, you have a hot spot. We use our own Wi-Fi to power each other. There's probably going to be a company to come out like that that's not necessarily on the blockchain. That's going to be a regular just corporation that are going to have hot spots for people and hot spots on our phones. And if everybody's under the same network, if you're walking around, I'm walking around. We can kind of bounce the hot spots off of each other and utilize that in the future. There's also Elon Musk that's coming out with Starlink. He's putting satellites in the sky, and there's going to be a worldwide Wi-Fi around the whole entire globe. But there's a problem with that is that I guess every few meters or steps or something like that, there's not going to be Wi-Fi because he's not going to be able to put enough satellites in the sky to actually orbit the whole entire world or that would be kind of fucked up for our no person. there's no way he's that rich yeah. that's gonna be a hell of a lot of money even, uh-uh. yeah even but he uh-uh. yeah. like this just makes me think about because i have a cottage in quebec so there's no hydro we're literally all on solar power out there and there's probably it's literally like in the bushes middle of fucking nowhere um no hydro no nothing so like i said solar power generators everything's like off the grid type shit so in order for us to get hydro out there, it will cost every house on the block or on the strip literally $18,000 to just put hydro lines coming into the neighborhood. And there's only 12 houses <laughs> where my little cottage is in this bush. And the hydro companies were freaking out because we're like, no, we're good off the grid here because you really can't, you, you can't, you can't really come into people's area and force them to do that especially if they kind of come together and say no we're okay we choose not to um and now they're trying to basically what they're trying to make everybody do down there is basically sign contracts without them knowing that they're going to have to pay more for property tax so that they can get these hydro lines in there Mm. because it's all happening under every i just just be careful man just read your shit just read your (laughs) contracts and (laughs) make sure you guys know what y'all are signing because yeah, when I found that out for my grandparents, they were like, thank God you're young and know how to read these freaking, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, that if I didn't know that they were doing this under everybody's nose, it would have been a shit show because now everybody's signing away everything. 
And yeah, that's what people are doing now. They're using little great things on social media or hey, hey, to to for 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 your better of your safety. Just and it's all the old people they're yeah, targeting, like yeah. vulnerable people. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, to better our platform, so you get better service. Click this link so we can provide gas third thirty five page essay that nobody's gonna read about how they're gonna take your data and blah 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 to better your experience on the platform, and they should be paying us for that shit. That's right. That's right. They have really all those should be paying us for that. Read the font. It's crazy. I brought that up. Sorry. I brought that up for a reason. The reason why I brought that whole contractual bullshit up is because off the strength of them literally targeting vulnerable people within the next 10 years, had they signed that contract, that cottage or that property, that land wouldn't even belong to them anymore. So mm-hmm. now it's literally like, Holy shit, like you're, you've been paying years for what's yours and now it's being taken away from you without you even knowing it. That's some crazy shit. Um, yep. And, yep. That's crazy. It's like those reverse mortgages. A lot of people think that that, that thought, thought that that was good when people are actually losing their homes behind it. Yeah, we like here, we're not even allowed to dig in the yard unless you call that. No, you know, have y'all heard about the 811 number? They, they're really strict about it here. Like, you're not allowed to dig or anything unless you call that number. And you own your property. There's no reason. I If I decide to take what? myself What? You can't yeah, dig on your I'm own just, property? Yeah. It's your a, own land, you can't dig in it. Yeah, if that's you a $4,000 fine. Cat, you can't do that? That's a $4,000 fine if you don't call OMG, that number. OMG, where are you and at? And they catch you. I'm in Mississippi, South Mississippi. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so ridiculous. serious. Like... It is very, but um, so so my thing is, if you own your land, why are you not? And it's because of, and the reason that they give is because the self, the lines that they lay for the internet, you're not allowed to bother them. <laughs> so, like, essentially, if you wanted to, you could. If I wanted to do this illegally, you could run. Like, if you had the equipment, you could run a line off of theirs because it's fiber optics, and if you knew how to do that, you could you know, essentially forge your own line. And I guess that's why, but at the same time, it's like, but you installed it on my property. So whatever whatever goes on here has to do with me. Why are you trying to find me? If you drive by my house and see me digging, you're going to charge me $4,000? That makes no sense. That's, that's insane. What if you're just trying to mourn your dead kitty? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they're not like you're not they and they have it on signs out here like you're not allowed to be and it was recent when they started like i remember growing up them saying you know before you did try and call them but now it's like no <laughs> no you're gonna pay for yeah it if you get caught a, a lot of a lot of things in life are going to look like freedom but really control and you know, that's just another example of how things are going to be on social media. It's going to look like it's going to come in the form of a sense of helping and it's going to be better for us all. And just like I'm not going to name y'all know what I'm talking about, but y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. The shit that they doing right now. Everything you can imagine always looks like that. And it's always going to, you know, rear end you later on in life. The number one thing in life is about freedom and ownership. If it ain't that, don't fucking do it. I don't give a fuck if they say the sun is going to blow up. Let that motherfucker blow up and we'll figure it out later. That ain't got nothing to do with me. But I do know that this house is mine and I don't want y'all putting no camera sunroof in my shit to blah, blah, blah. Fuck all that. Like, not. Nah. Right. Why are you putting stipulations on what's mine? Exactly. exactly. It's mine. It's mine. Don't put no stipulations on that. I'm going <laughs> to have who I want. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to go where I want, when I want, how I want, if it's on my property. Like, excuse me? But it's crazy hearing you say that. Literally, I said out loud. I was like, consumerism at its finest, I swear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it literally, Canada's getting worse, too. It's yeah, and now they're talking about. Remember, we don't. We're not going to say the name, guys. We don't need to say. We all know what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, they're they're like, oh, now it's the people that 
you know, don't didn't didn't get it. Now you guys are the problem. We gotta we gotta we gotta finish y'all off. Right? Yeah. We gotta get, make sure it's a whole plan. And now they're now they're getting the companies like Tyson. I don't know if y'all saw the news with Tyson. They're making all their people do it and mandates coming back again. It's just like oh, and there's now literally these- places around here that you cannot go in unless you are. It's like, are you kidding me? Even if I have on the proper things that I need, that it started in the beginning of all of it. Like there's just so many rules and regulations that have been put in place. And I swear to God, everybody who I've told this to, this is fucking population control at its finest. Mm-hmm. I know I or at least crazy. or at least preparation for something right. from the future or whatever's gonna come in the future. Because like people, it's it's so easy to kind of like whip us around as a mass. Mm-hmm. Like it's we're we're so easily segregated. It's so crazy, and it's just, it's just, it's a bad look when, I don't know, man. It's just, there's no hope. My hope for society has dwindled immensely, especially throughout this thing, especially as a, a, a a citizen of Canada. Like, I don't know. This whole, it's a shit show. (laughs) Trust you me, I understand. It's a shit show here too. On the other side, on the south. All right, everybody. Let's move to Tulum, where um, more cases. Okay. Let's pick no, our ain't coming over let's here. Go. <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. This, no, is, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> let's all put some money in a pot with our cheese, and we'll all become millionaires by the end of the year. Yes. <laughs> no. It's so my, good, y'all. Yeah. A social money pot, like. <laughs> that would be actually. That we can do it. If we wanted to, Honestly, like and and like fun, fun a couple of things. I really think that a uh, public owned and operated internet system is going to be paramount. But if not, information is so freely transferred over the internet. Books are um, obsolete. People don't like to read more. You're gonna have to pay for your information. You already do that with colleges, but it's gonna get even more control. What you're what you're even able to know. Like, it's just so crazy. <laughs> Well, that's that's been the case for a long time. Yeah, and that's the scariest part about it. That's been happening without us even knowing it for so freaking long. And now we're only starting to realize it. And it's off the strength of us coming together in little groups like this. But more and more, little groups are forming. So at least the word's getting out somehow. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm about to go back to work. I'm actually still working, <laughs> but I want. I'm trying to work, but I can't listen to y'all and focus at the same time. I, I did, and do I like did want to ask you one quick thing before you leave. Are you using like sustainable energy at your place? Like, do you have like your own, like your solar panels, like with a like a reverse meter, or do you have a well? Like, I have my own generator, yes. and I have solar power panels as well. And I don't have my own well because um, Mexico has their own cenotes out here. And you can just go to those and get whatever water you need. Um, some cenotes are privately owned. Some are public. They have a river. So, you, I mean, you really don't. You remember all of Mexico has underground water running through it from the ocean and the rivers. Clear water. un tainted is fucking it's crazy how beautiful and clear it's this shit's so clear and so like crazy that you me being who i am and where i'm from it just don't seem real really it just don't seem fucking real it don't it's like i'm scared to get in the water but it's fresh water and there's nothing in there but it's just scary as hell it's just like yo this shit's so beautiful and it's in a cave and it's just you telling me this shit is 500 meters down it's a big ass pool of fresh water like how no alligators no sharks no like no monsters in here no 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 diseases <laughs> no like monsters. what the fuck like how this shit been around for thousands of years like this shit clear as fuck this shit should be dirty like your mind is mind fucked literally it's mind fucked it makes you think why do i pay at a grocery store for bottled water what am i paying for and water was given to me when do, when was people ever paying for water? 
because I know back in the day they wasn't paying for water. I paid three dollars oh. for a bottle of Nestle water yesterday. I thought to myself, "Don't oh. get Nestle." Hell no. That's like that shit is. They oh, make no. that water. I was from so their thirsty. I was clouds. so thirsty. I had to. I had to. That was the. It was either that or Dasani. No, so no, neither Nestle. one of those. No. <laughs> you guys all need I'm to buy. Water. You guys need to go buy zero water pitchers and and that's it. You you shouldn't even be buying yeah. bottled water because the daggone plastic particles that that come off the sun. Yeah, yes it off. should be protected it yes. should it, you should be in an aluminum Alum, aluminum uh aluminum yes, or uh, titanium yep or glass it should be protected from the from the water yeah. i mean from the sun mm -hmm. So them shit oh, yeah. sitting out in that so plastic. The estrogen doesn't get into it. Yeah. 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 Don't Maybe don't drink bottled water, year. water, please, y'all. Oh, if it's in plastic, Ta get, go get yourself a little titanium little water pitcher and 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 then get a zero pitcher. Filter your own water um, and then pour it in there. You're good, okay. And it keeps the temperature too when you use a titanium water yeah, bottle. Got me cracking up over here. <laughs> That, I knew. I knew that that's was what I started doing ahead. instead of buying waters. I don't buy buy bottled waters anymore, but because that's the best way to drink water. I actually did a lot of research to find out which pitcher was the was the best to use to filter water, and it's zero water pitchers. You can get it on Amazon cheap for forty dollars. You know that's the best water you could ever drink because it keeps all the minerals in it, but it removes the bad minerals because you don't want to boil your water because you're taking out the good and the bad minerals. And the water that Marquise is talking about, man, I, I know that's amazing because you got all those min minerals in there. I minerals, yes, yes, yes. The minerals, I forgot. I ain't even mentioned that. The whole goddamn thing is mineral. <laughs> the whole thing. It's crazy. No wonder why they, you know, so beautiful and don't look, you know, age like, you know, like they you swimming that all day, you drink that all day, you gonna live for to ninety. Exactly. Uh, I don't even know if I want to live to that long because that's <laughs> just too much life, <laughs> too much life. <laughs> you be the I wizard. Knew, I knew it wasn't the game when I realized. It. Literally. Say that, say that one more time. I said I knew, like it was. They were trying to get over it when what? I when I looked and saw Evian water it was literally naive spelled backwards. Oh, okay. I was like, what did he say? Oh, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Marquise. I'm gonna wish you a good night. I'm out of here. Thank you for the conversation. I appreciate you. God bless. Oh, Stay thank you so there. much for joining. I appreciate you. I, actually, yeah. we're going to end this off for everybody. We all going to get off of here because I've been on here way longer than I was supposed to. I was Way just... longer than an hour for free information. Yeah. I, <laughs> hold on. Wait. Did, did I say that in the title? What did, what did you I... sure damn well did. You said <laughs> you I'm sure giving out free info. Come on in. One hour. Yep. I said, oh, shit. I have 20 minutes left. <laughs> wow. Last came into a whole hour and a half conversation. I said, buddy. <laughs> you're right. Oh, you're right. Tonight. <laughs> Pre you're appreciate right, you, right. Marquise, all the time. You for sure. Honestly. Appreciate you guys, man. Yeah. I'm about to get off. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm going to try to God do more spaces. Here, huh? Thanks for having yeah, us, Marquise. Try to do Marquise. more spaces, man. I appreciate the game, honestly, because they don't like to tell people that here, and you got to really find John. So it's good that you're really trying to share it with everyone. Right. Yeah, man. Make sure y'all create y'all business plans. For your personal and also for your um, other business revenue streams. If you don't know something, Google it. If you don't know how to do something, Google it. Someone on YouTube will teach you for free. Um, there's Fiverr. There's other third-party platforms that are do the marketing and advertising for you. There's so many things you could do, man. Just get the money. Invest the money. You can save, but saving won't do anything for you. Um, your dollar, your money is not for you to hold on to. You want to know what's it's for you to invest it. So sorry. I'm so sorry for interrupting you. You want to know what's so crazy no, when I first came I in? Yeah, something. I was. And then I, I, I was like, fuck, you're interrupting again. Shut up. So I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but when I first joined this conversation, you were it was a little bit before you were talking about the scooters. And I was literally like, should I be the one to ask or should I not be the one to ask? Because I was that kid in the class that would be like sitting in the back like, hmm, should I ask? So like, 
How do you make money if you're broke and you ain't got money to invest money to make money? Because you got to invest money to make money. You know what I mean? But I'll message you about that. We'll talk. <laughs> right, for sure. Just message me, but I'm just answering your questions really quick. So if you don't have any money, money is in circulation. Money is in circulation. So when money is in circulation, it has to circulate to something. So most people take money, either you're providing a service or you're doing a task for somebody or you have a business. You're you're getting something or giving something that somebody wants. And that can be anything. Right. So there's always people online. Like I said, when people say Google, there's always people searching. You can go to Google keywords or you can go to uh, freak Google dot trends. I believe you guys, if anybody else knows what I'm talking about, I think it's Google dot trends or type in on Google, Google trends, click on that website. It's the first one that should pop up. And then you type in a keyword. You can look at things that people are searching up around you in your area. You can look up keywords that they're searching for. That goes from candles, uh, fucking lighters, chips, grocery stores, liquor stores, whatever they're typing in on the internet in your area, you can see who's in your city what they're looking up, how many searches a day, how many searches a month. And you can be the provider and the source for those certain things that people are searching for. And then you can tell them that, hey, it is um, what people be saying. Not black owned, but they be saying like it's um, homegrown or it's 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 from the community. Matter of fact, it's it's in your area. It's local. It's a local business, quote unquote. And you could do things like that, be a provider. A lot of people don't know about outsourcing and being a white label you can look up white label white labels is basically you can either resell with your packaging on it and you don't have to buy anything or you can buy it and then white label it and slap your sticker on it so someone else makes it they send it to you wholesale price and then you actually slap your label on it there's a, there's there's a gazillion things you could do if you don't have no money to even buy the stuff for white label you can do things online digitally and create them for people. I, we talked about social media management. I don't know if I talked about that before the scooters or after the scooters, but I, I broke that whole thing down. I have to do it another time. Maybe somebody can DM it to you. But yeah, so I'm about to, uh, yeah, I'm about to dip out though. All <laughs> right. I'm talking too much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marquise. All right, love you guys. I'll love be on Clubhouse. Too. Uh, once I get this Bitcoin loan thing figured out, uh, I ran into a problem and I need to figure that out. I'm still working on it and doing a gazillion other things, but I'll be back on there once I figure it out because I have to, you know, I have to figure that out. But Clubhouse, I've grown like 500 followers, 700 followers since I left. It, the same rooms are still there, the same people. Nothing has changed on there. So, I'm, I mean, I ain't, I'm not missing too much. I know you guys probably missing me or whatever, but yes, I'll be back. We are. I'm alive. I'm alive. A lot of people are looking forward to the crypto versus. Um, they've been talking about that a lot. They're like, oh, I wonder which one's going to win. Is it going to be Ethereum? Is it going to be Cardano? <laughs> or Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're talking yeah. about right now. All right, for sure. All right, I'll see y'all later. Y'all already follow me, so I can't advertise and promote nothing. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. And whenever y'all see me doing hosting the spaces, just know it's going to be informational and I'm going to be dropping gems. I'm not coming on here to talk about shit. I'm not coming on here to brag. I'm always opening rooms and I'm dropping gems. You can raise your hand. I'll answer your question. You can ask me a question. And that's what it's going to be every single time. So come prepared. Take notes. Whatever I say, do your own research on it. But Take these, take this information and fucking work towards what the fuck you want to do in life. Because you're only getting older every single day. And if you feel like you don't have an opportunity, you feel like you don't have the money, and you do have the money to do certain things, do that shit. Don't waste no time. Don't hold on to the money because the money is not real money. It's not real. It's not really, it's not really uh, cash. Like when they say cash, it's not really cash. It's really a bond. A bond is uh, it's a legal tender for you to pay off debt. You can read it. I'm actually looking at this shit right now. If you look at the top right, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So this shit is only made for you to give to somebody else. It's not really made to hold, store, or anything like that. So I'm going to leave, leave y'all with that. I'm